Welcome. It is Wednesday night in Chaldea Studios on Gen Con TV. We are here to play actor Roki. Uh, we are doing a campaign called Burning Saratov using the Burning Wheel game system by Luke Crane. And this is session one. We had a session zero a couple weeks ago where characters started creating characters. And now, uh, and there was a bunch of players here. Uh, but I'm trying, I'm trying something I think is a little different. Uh, I've seen before anyway, uh, where I have a cast of currently eight players and then each game system, I will bring in a subset of three of those eight players. I think this will work because it's not sort of an adventure game where everybody's in a troop and going on an adventure together. It is a political game uh, with um, political intrigue and where uh, we will attack the question, what happens to an empire when the God Emperor dies? We've been saying that for years. We've been asking that question for years, but we've never really talked about it. Uh, we've been running games where we're off adventuring. Well, we're this particular campaign scenario is going to the heart of the Chaldea um, Empire, the Kronavan Empire, and uh, we, the characters here, are going to, um, for a brief moment, where it's as if the Emperor is still alive, and then the Emperor is going to die, and then it'll be like, oh, what happens next? So that should be a lot of fun. So um, we will, uh, two of our three players have never played Burning Wheel before. I've never run a game at this level before, and, um, and Sarah has played this game before, but not at this level either. Uh, so we will be, um, uh, it'll be fun for us to get acclimated. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> play, it'll, be fun. <laughs> it'll be like playing D&D &D for the first time and rolling up a 20th level character. That's kind of what it's gonna be. These characters are gonna be very powerful uh, people in the political scene in the Imperial capital. All right, so, um, Talk about safety discussions. Uh, we will not, of course, lines in this game uh, and veils. Lines and veils are the two techniques we use. Lines are topics that will not come up at all. Veils are topics that if it comes up, we like, whoa, slow down, uh, deal with it kind of abstractly, cut away from it, not get into the details. And so uh, for the most part, we will follow the guidelines of Twitch and YouTube, which there will be no domestic violence, no physical, uh, you know, physical assault, or I mean, um, sexual assault, excuse me, and uh, no, certainly no violence towards children, and um, not withhold, no withholding food as punishment for children. Anything else I forgot for yours, no, Sarah? No, those are all mine. We're those, good. Those, yeah, those yep. are yours. Everybody want, everybody's comfortable with these rules? Feel yep. like you understand these rules? And yep. Okay. Um, if something comes up that you didn't anticipate would bother you, let me know. We can veil it or we'll take a break and talk about it. Um, whatever seems like uh, the, the good thing to do. So it's right in that moment. Okay. So we are going to start by getting better acquainted with your characters and who these characters are, where they come from, uh, and so forth. But actually, let's start with a round of introductions, first of all. So uh, introduce yourself, where you can be found on the internet, and just a little bit about your character, and then I'm going to come back and ask you more questions, okay? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Moore. My pronouns are she, her, and you can find me all over the internet at Pixies and Pins, or my website, which is pixiesandpins.com. Um, and I'm going to be playing... Lenora today, who is an elf and is the etharch of the Dire Wood. She's also a princess. She has a lot of money and is very old. <laughs> is that good? Half a millennia, right? Half a millennia, yeah. Over, just over 500 years old. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The etharch means the ruler of the of Dire Wood. I'm so, in charge. Yeah, yeah she's in charge of, of the wood, at least that wood. All right, Lexi. Well, hello, I am Lexi. You can find me across the internet as Lexi the First. My pronouns are she, her, as are the pronouns of the character I'll be playing today, who is Farina. She is a human, she is 52 years old, um, and she comes from Hakamanesh, but she is currently in the capital because she is the Imperial Consul of the Penal Code. So she's really fun at parties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everyone loves a rules lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> do, do we? Yes, in oh. this game system we do. <laughs> yes. That's very fair. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Bryce Bebop. You can find me online by searching Bryce Bebop because there's not a whole lot of us. Uh, 
I'm he, they, and I am playing Kishar Talib, who is they, them. They're from Acadia, which has some distinctive views on those of the male persuasion, which Kishar presents as. They're very good at physical labor. Very good at physical labor. So strong. Uh, <laughs> Tishar makes things as an enchanter and is part of the Senate, but not a member of the consuls. But is an assistant to one of them, a little little dragon friend. There you go. A little little dragon. I mean, yeah. I don't know the size of the dragons. So right. yeah, we're gonna get into that. So, <laughs> so. Uh, and I am Peter Atkinson. My pronouns are he they. And uh, delighted to be here. All right, let's. Um, well, I would like to um, uh, start with some art because I brought in a couple pieces. Um, the, this is map of one of the continents of Chaldea, uh, Tamika. I have it out here because it has the imperial capital, which is Saratov, which is the setting for our game. Saratov is set in the kingdom of Rush, which is inspired by 10th, 11th century Rus, Kiev, Rus, Ukraine, modern day. The, um, and nearby neighbors of also Latium, which is Roman style, Tashimau, which is Egyptian style, Hakamonics, which is where you're from. And um, Akadia is not on this particular map. This is just mm. one continent out of 10 in the world of Chaldea. Dire Wood is on this map right there. That's where you're from. And we were talking about um, Balakia earlier, and uh, Savitas is there. Anyway, that's Palace that's Savitas. That's bad, that's a bad that's thing okay. for me. <laughs> Uh, so we have a couple of pieces of art I'd like to bring out. Cool. Um, a lot of the topic is about the emperor, Kordava, and the fact that he's going to die tonight. Um, spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert. So I thought I would share a little bit of art that we have. Um, this is him when he was, uh, before he took over the world, sort of in the process of taking over the world as a legatus, um, a Roman style emperor and also as a statesman, um, different as a student, as so on and so forth. Um, 40 years ago, he was ascended. Oh, let's lay these out like this, I guess. He was ascended uh, by the Egyptian god Set to become a demigod. So Kurava is a demigod of Set, and that's him, that's Set. Uh, this is him, like an archetypical picture of him as a emperor sitting in the throne, uh, the Ponek throne, uh, with all the cool armor that he has. I'm sliding this down a little bit. Yeah. Um, this is a better picture of the throne. I guess it was improved. The wings were added. This is <laughs> him sitting on the throne, the Ponek throne. Uh, he's very famous for his Drazzledar. There are 100 Drazzledar, they're a unique species, and they are invincible. They've never fallen in combat. Well, at least if they ever did, it was covered up and nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so he always has 20 of these with him. And uh, the other ones are around Chaldea, various places. Like every legion has two of them. Lots of places that he, that Kurava decided to, needed guarding for one reason or another. Like um, the entrance to the city of Ife. Hmm. Remember the Drazzledar? You DM'd I do remember. that. <laughs> You've DM'd the Drazzledar yeah. before, yes. Okay. Killed her in that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you remember that too. He Absolutely. Died. <laughs> yeah. uh, so a wonderful so memory. <laughs> thanks. The Imperial City, Saratov. Um, this is the Imperial Palace. It's really pretty. Uh, it there's pretty. Colossus, of course. Um, there is uh, the. Where is that? I need to look at it right side up <laughs> for just a moment. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, there it is. Uh, the uh, uh, the temple of the. I would call it. A, I, I don't want to use the word cathedral because that's a Catholic reference. I try to avoid usage of contemporary religions, but um, basically the number one. Uh, there is a term for it, but I can't remember it. <laughs> it's an Egyptian term. Anyway, the main pyramid slash temple of, of Set mm. is here. So you've been there. Yes. And, um, uh, you and might, you this, might be there now. <laughs> this is what's called the mall. 
it's a long road uh, that goes from the palace to what's in the foreground, but you can't see it, which is the Senate discourse. So when the Senate convenes, um, it's on the opposite end. You know, I always, I, I've been to the mall in Washington, D.C. It's pretty mm. cool. I'm <laughs> like, oh, yeah, okay, this is what I got to run with, right? So, <laughs> and the obelisk of law and uh, so on and so forth. Anyway, um, one last picture that I think might speak to uh, what Bryce was asking about earlier. Um, this is um, the uh, Council of Consuls. The little fella. This mm. is where some of you are on. Uh, and that's Lavroth. <laughs> <laughs> Such, I mean, you know, on the scale of things. Yeah, he's kind of cute. I guess he's smaller than the planet. Right? I yeah. guess. So tiny. Yeah. Star Lothroth. Mm. So cute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lothroth is, um, uh, many dragons enjoy changing, shape changing, taking human form. It's a common dragon thing. Sort of. Lothroth refuses to do it. He refuses to get smaller, refuses to change his form. Mm -hmm. He's a dragon. So for him to attend council meeting, they had to build an atrium. There's a level of the palace where he can fly into and land and scooch over to hang out above the council of consuls mm -hmm. meeting chamber. And um, still, look, still only counts look. as one boat. Still only counts. Mm, yeah. Mm. And uh, if he should decide, he no longer well, needs the rest of the council. Let's, <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about what votes. Oh. Uh, there, there's no there, votes. You get two that votes. That sounds like democracy. Oh, I see. Democracy oh. hasn't been invented yet. No. Yeah. Actually, there is kind That's of like job. a fringe group of people over at Mycenae who talk about democracy, but it mm -hmm. hasn't Mission. really caught on. <laughs> no, no, no. The Council of Consuls is chaired by the Emperor. And what the emperor says goes. Mm -hmm. It is a place to discuss. People, you know, consuls share things. Guests are sometimes brought in to share things. And then the emperor decides what to do. Hmm. Or if the emperor's not there, uh, Bogoslav Tihomir, who is the chair of the Council of Consuls, he decides. Wow. Okay, dokey. Just, the word vote, you can just kind of scratch that out of your uh, vocabulary. It's like there's no voting. <laughs> that was cute. There, yeah. That's cute. <laughs> You're so there's cute. a little lobbying and so on. Uh, but that's, yeah, there's some. Um, and actually, council meetings for, for this is mainly for your benefit because you two aren't, con aren't consuls, but the, yeah. um, and for anybody else who's watching, the Senate yeah. is several hundred people that only convenes like once a year. And they're, you're both senators, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but the um, uh, and senators are from all over Chaldea, and they have day jobs like ruling countries and stuff like that. But the <laughs> Council of Consuls is a subset of that of about 20 uh, individuals who are required, who are senators. It's a subset of the Senate who are required to move to the imperial capital, and their day job is being a council member because they run a department, like the Department of the Penal Code. Uh, for <laughs> the empire. Fun at parties. Okay. So you guys, <laughs> this, so is the, this is the room where it happens, mm -hmm. as they say, is right? Is this a musical room episode? <laughs> this is, no. Don't tempt us. Oh. oh, God. No. We'll have to have one someday, but yes. tonight yes. is not. Tonight, today is not it. that day, yeah. And if I'm not invited, I don't I'll even try. think I'll be the DM that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she yes, could DM. totally, totally, <laughs> totally could do that. Yep, yep. <laughs> Okay. If Megan's not here that night, she will actually kill us all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I want to do is go through a little bit about uh, these characters and um, their backgrounds, just so I can get a little bit better understanding of who your characters are. And this is this is, um, I mean, I'm, this system is very much about role playing and engaging with backstory and and relationships and stuff like that. So. Okay, well, I'm gonna go around this okay. way. That's my habit. Okay, so life paths. Go ahead. Um, Lenora was born Ethark. Then she was an attendant. Sorry, can you spell that for the sake of my notes? Yeah, E T H A R C H. Oh, and can I interrupt real quick? Absolutely. Um, I don't. It's oh, you know, no as you probably know, it's very difficult to DM and watch Twitch, but I welcome any of you who, if, especially when you have, you know, <laughs> if we're talking, don't do it then, but like <laughs> when I'm talking to somebody else, feel free to be on Gen Con TV Twitch channel. And if somebody, feel free to be a conduit of information for me since I can't watch. Mm -hmm. um, also don't feel like you have to, but I Can think you also it's- also spell your character's name? Yeah. 
It's L-E-N-O-R-A. Lenora. There is an apostrophe after the L because she's an elf, so she's fancy. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Okay, so attendant. And then second, second. And then sword singer. And these are all three combat oriented type life paths, right? Correct. Yep. And then princess. And then Ethark. And Ethark is a life path that's 200 years, right? Yes. Right. So you have been, you have ruled Direwood. Yes. Which is here. Uh, well, technically, you think of yourself as ruling all of Direwood. Well, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it is part of Direwood. There's Dire East and Dire West. Uh, Dire West has um, become difficult to administer um, in recent years. Years. Yeah. yeah, which is maybe part of why I'm here. Currently. Yeah, it might be part of why you're, you're uh, coming to the capital. Yeah, but I reside in Dire East. Yeah, and there's the capital, Glissomir. It's probably where it is. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful elven city. It's really pretty. And uh, all right. So you, yeah, as a ruler of Dire so you are a senator. I mean, so high, high, high elf, mucky de muck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is an elven council mm -hmm. that you are not on. Oh, rude. And you probably <gasps> resent this a little bit. Yeah. It's um, but your father or mother, who's even older than you are, yeah, it sort of holds that spot. So like, yeah, like like they let you run the country. <laughs> they let but me. Thanks, they, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Dad lets you run the country, uh, but and he's the one on the council. Yep. Okay, so the Elven Council, you know it exists. You've probably attended council before, you know, meets every 50 years or whatever. Yeah. Maybe, maybe more often than that. Um, but just kind of letting you know that you're, you have a, um, that that place exists. What a and, jerk. And um, it's that council that appointed Ventus, a high elf, as the warden of the forested lands of the empire, which is, I mean, every major elf kingdom, Direwood is one of four or five. And it has you know its own royalty, its own aristocracy, and who rules it. And Ventus, who doesn't really have a position in any particular elven kingdom other than he's a high elf. High elves are rare, by the way. High elves are. Uh, a unique uh, ethnicity of elves that um, have all the elven songs, access to all the elven songs like you do, mm -hmm. but also study sorcery the way that humans do or mm -hmm. other races do. And so they're particularly gifted at magic. It's yeah. also what particularly else? at being a D-bag. <laughs> <laughs> Very it, gifted at that. <laughs> Choice of Ventus has been kind of a controversial pick, but yeah. um, you will know you have realized, that your character certainly knows, and I think you know, there are no elves on the Council of Consuls. Oh, very aware, yeah. yes. So I just talked about this Council of Consuls that runs the empire, no elves on it. No, but dwarves? What the hell is that? Two dwarves. And a dragon. I'm and a dragon, <laughs> and no elves. The yeah. relationship between elves and the emperor has been strained. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's better now than it used to be, but um, no, but we have really long memories. Uh, <laughs> really long. I know you do. So does the emperor. So does the emperor. He did anyway. For yeah. Now. His memories are about to end. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Ventus is, but there was, and there has been this concern that elves are not represented on the Council of Consuls mm -hmm. and are not really represented in court. And so Kradava agreed to appoint an elf, and he nominated Ventus. It was like, like, his, like take, his poker buddy? Like, take, <laughs> take, the, take the ground you can get, uh, right? Yes. Take, take the progress you can get. Appointed Ventus as, as warden. It's not even a, uh, he's the, sen so uh, he's a senator too. He hasn't even been in the position long enough to have ever attended Senate, I don't think. No. Uh, <laughs> These guys. But, uh, the worst. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he's, not what you would call a good elf. No. I mean, good aligned. Like, you know, I do use the alignments of D&D, &D, good, evil, law, <laughs> chaos. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see. Okay, I'm ready so those to, are your life to, paths. I'm ready I'm to gonna, RP I'm, being real mad at. Okay, I know you are. I'm <laughs> working you up, and I'm going to keep piling it on. All right, let's okay, go. Okay, okay. So I'm going to do a little. I'm going to. I don't want to do all of yeah, do no. you all entirely. And anyway, I'm going to come back to you. I'm mad on okay. Thank so, you. Ventus is a jerk. <sighs> and so let's talk about your life paths, Lexi. All right. As soon as. Bryce logs into his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> no we problem. will do that. Good, I know I, I was born in this city. I a moment to take city. a drink. I'm pointing you. I, I, I don't know your password. I something, don't care if you know the If something goes wrong, it'll computer. be my fault. It's always your fault. I know. Whoa. <laughs> no, 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 he's right. It's okay. We all <laughs> love to feel the love <laughs> tonight. La, 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 la. Joyful gaming. I can tell you your life path. This is why we only sit next to each other. We're close. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so my life paths are, uh, she is city born um, back in Hakamanesh. Uh, she went from that to being a cultist, first real job, woo! Yeah. Um, uh, Vino she went, le left home and joined a cult. Yeah, left I love home, it. So she was young, Who I mean, a like a teenager, right? Yep. Early teen. Yep, Went out sure and joined did. a cult. cult. Joined okay. a cult. We're uh, gonna come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> this will not come back to bite me. We, uh, at all. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> uh, she then became a venal priest, which for those of you who don't know what that is, is a priest that specifically accepts bribes. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing great. I love <laughs> from, this. From there, she became an archpriest, then bishop, and then went to the imperial consul, which she is on uh, her second. She's she, took two life paths in imperial consul, so she's one of the senior members of the consul. Yes. At the ripe young That's age of 52. Fabulous. And in fact, um, 52. So you were 12. You were like several hundred, but you were 12 <laughs> when the emperor became, when Kradav became emperor of the world. Yes. Uh, so you remember, you have some memory of what Chaldea was like before then, but not Absolutely. much. Only the memory of a child and then, or a cultist, who probably, that's probably about the time you went off and joined the cult. Yeah. Maybe it motivated you to join a cult. Yeah. Who's this guy, like, Emperor? Hey, he's doing pretty well. No. Maybe I need my own religious fraction to take is over the world. Is that my path? Like, yeah. <laughs> and then, also can I me? work my way Same. up to this? Hold on, I didn't know so, that was an option in life. <laughs> so if you're okay with it, uh, one of the probably. things that I use, because it's now intellectual property, is, is now, um, it is now public domain property, is the mythos. Cthulian mythos. If you, want to, if you want to talk about cults, I think uh, you joined a cult of yes. uh, Nyarlathotep. I love Nyarlathotep. He's my favorite. Yes. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I will work on pronouncing You're, that. Yeah, I'm working on it too. Uh, are you I good with that? Good. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So I'm imagining there's this. She's uh, twelve. She'd agree to anything. There's several years <laughs> of you so being cool. in this cult, and I'm picturing like this very charismatic cult leader, like the best cult leaders are, you know. Yeah. Uh, you gotta be. <laughs> no one listens to a lame cult leader. young teenagers who are running away. <laughs> it's like a traveling Classic. caravan that would travel like up a, and down. Like uh, a circus. Uh, you know, travel <laughs> across cults. Cordova or Chaldea. Circus cult. And, <laughs> yeah, kind of like a, you know, yeah. and very, very smart, very philosophy, you know, and, it, and he had this great device, kind of like a telescope. Yeah. And he would, you, your cult, you would look for places where there's moments in time where there would not be any Anumians in the sky. Ooh. Okay? So that you could see past the plane of On into the celestial realm where the, the elder gods live. Yeah. And... And when you'd stra look through the telescope, these tendrils would come out and wrap around your head, and you'd have all these visions. And oh, um, that's how that she seemed, knew it was real. That seems unhealthy. <laughs> that's a strange circus. <laughs> the best oh, these are what you do late at night after the circus oh, okay. that yeah, happens, right? Yeah, yeah. This is not a daytime activity, Bryce. <laughs> and it's quite You're Nirvana. So it was. It was quite Nirvana. Yeah, uh, the, it's better you know, than what she grew up in, which was. Poor, hungry, and cold, or hot, depending on the climate. <laughs> but she did not have shelter from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or wet. Dry. I mean, there's some, <laughs> there there's some air leakage, <laughs> but you know. There's it's... definitely an adjective in there. <laughs> yeah. The weather was extreme, and she was not protected from it right. in some direction. So eventually, yeah. though, you ran away from the cult. 
probably the cult leader was inappropriate in some way. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more along the lines of she realized that it was all a sham and went, wait a minute, why can't I run my own sham? Oh. oh. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> so you I went and joined the priesthood. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the priesthood of Set, which yes, was the new the cult. only legal religion. <laughs> Yep, which and. she did, not really buying into it at first, hence the venal priest. But then her time there, she she was like, oh, wait, this is real. It is not creepy tentacles in the middle of the night. And uh, I think I'm going to buy into this, actually, with my whole heart. <laughs> okay, you're a priest of set with your whole heart. Excellent, uh, yep. excellent. As you have, you know, when you first joined, the priest of set actually seemed like a pretty good alignment church, you know, mm -hmm. all about the you know, safe place in the afterlife, the, you know, weather's been great, um, all sorts of stuff. You do know that there is a darker side to the church. Mm -hmm. In fact, as a venal priest, that might have been why you were promoted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is uh, some shenanigans that go on. Yeah, uh, she probably yeah. turned around and punished some of those shenanigans later when she became more powerful, like the same shenanigans that put her in power, too. <laughs> she, uh, yeah. So you, know. you do have a Just on a journey. Uh, you do have a relationship with Holson. Holson is the head of the priesthood of Set, and he is called the Menbet. Uh, his title, and Holson used to be, and Kradava, the emperor. The two of them are like old adventuring buddies from back in the day, mm -hmm. and uh, bros. Ugh. And what he's one of the few people you've ever seen who's actually bigger than Kradava. He's, oh. he's like a really muscular priest. He's yeah. like, you know. There's Got a six pack. Just I, I make a lot of Conan references, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the second Conan movie, there was Conan, but then there was Will Chamberlain, who was even bigger than Conan. Oh, I have to reach my venal priest life path to Swole Priest. Hold on. Does that come in Swole Arch Priest? <laughs> I'm keeping track of options for names of the episode, and so far, Creepy Tentacles in the Middle of the Night and Father <laughs> Swole. <laughs> Father Happy Swole. To provide. <laughs> so. Okay, uh, okay, we have a little bit of background there for you. And you are, uh, by the way, Pars is inspired by Persian culture from, uh, you know, pre-Alexander, you know, Achaemenid Empire, mm -hmm. uh, ancient Mesopotamia, so. All right, Bryce, yeah. let's go to you. And um, life paths and, well, we talked a little bit about Akkadia. Actually, let's continue the Akkadia. Okay. So you are from Akkadia, yes. you're non-binary. Non-binary. I respect that. Uh, uh, but born masculine, which okay. you know yeah. how it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So Over you. There it is. Yeah. So Akadia does not treat men well. No. And you have a backstory of how you got out. Uh, so I was born noble. How, how did you manage to come to a place where you could be non-binary? Uh, <laughs> my my thought is that since I was born noble, they're like, yeah, but we need you to get. You're the shame of the family because oh. you are masculine. Get out. Oh, no. And so they oh, just kind of shipped him off to school. That's what my toddler says, too. Human, oh, no. Human, Sorry. Humans are mean. Humans are quite mean. So they shipped, at the time, him off to school where he became an arcane devotee and started exploring himself as well as the magical world. Okay. They then realized that there was more to life than the views of Acadia. And became more of a sorcerer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they realized they could be a court sorcerer because, you know. Right, so you worked your way up. Yeah. So you came to uh, the Imperial ca Capital. Uh, you came to Saratov when yeah. they le left. And let's see, how old are you? I am 59. 59, okay, so you were 19 when the Emperor became Emperor, uh, which is, you were probably into your, um, so you might have come to it's up to you. I mean, you don't, don't have to decide tonight. You might have go, gone somewhere else. I mean, the point is you left Akkadia. Yeah. Um, this would maybe, maybe you came to Saratov by coincidence, but this would have been before Saratov was the imperial capital. Gotcha. Could have been in anywhere. And, um, uh, and but now you're, you've moved to Saratov mm -hmm. at some point uh, because that's certainly by the time, uh, by the time you were 19, mm -hmm. by the time you were wrapping up the arc, Cain devotee life path. Uh, Kradava became emperor. Saratov became the capital of the world. So that would have been like a great thing for a young guy, young yeah. uh, character yeah. to 
go. Young let's person. Say, young got, person. I got so yeah. many things going on. Party yeah. time. Let's go to the Imperial like, Capital. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. New Capital Court Sorcerer. You guys need me? I got magic. Hey, hey, um, hey. There hey, you go. Hey. There you go. So you have taken a uh, relationship. So let's transition okay. to relationships and I'll come back and talk to you guys about your relationships as well. Um, but you have chosen a relationship with Lau Froth. Our sweet, sweet dragon the, friend. The dragon. Okay. Little pal. My sweet, um, sweet dragon. Let's friend. not mince words. Lau Froth is evil. Fair enough. Very. Oh. very okay. Very. Yeah, yeah, that's like, right. Like he just, uh, he is. He is an evil, mm -hmm. dra an evil dragon. Bad dragon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I mean, just, you know, no compulsion at all about Oof. eating someone or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just whatever. Hence right? my hesitation just, with his and seat. All the <laughs> intelligence and, arc and uh, arrogance that you would expect. Okay. Uh, he is over at least a thousand years old because he was in the Clawhammer War, which is a thousand years ago, the war between the dragons and the dwarves. Mm hmm and he is the Grand Vizier. He is the person that Cordava relies on for, uh, any, for understanding anything in the realm of the supernatural other than what the priesthood takes care of, mm -hmm. right? So magic, um, necromancy, you know, anything having to do with uh, supernatural stuff. He's Jafar. I was just thinking. And but he's so old. <laughs> he is very, very old. His beard is so okay. twisted. So you have, you used the term confidant yeah. as a term of your relationship. Earlier, you had to use the term apprentice at one point. Uh, oh. I, you know, magic, <laughs> it's really hard to say good or evil, evil. because it's about the advancement of knowledge. Mm. Okay. And there yeah. are things yeah. that sometimes you have to do to advance that knowledge. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. as a character, definitely just put that on the back burner mm. and uh, try to balance out some of the more openly negative actions. So I donate my time at the local children's hospital. Mm -mm -mm. Um, I make potions. <laughs> this appealing. is like I killed a bunch of people, but then I planted a tree. So it like really it balances really out. Balances out. <laughs> like life finds a way. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> Why? Why do you have a relationship with Lafa? Um, what is it that you looking for or getting out of this? I would love if he ever decided not to be on the Council of Councils. They're gonna need somebody to step in to be the magical supernatural person. Okay, okay, sure, sure. If that yeah. were to ever yeah. happen. Right. If Lalfroth were to have an unfortunate dragon accident? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably not gonna happen, but Okay, so you're, okay, so that's, that's, um, uh, so what you want out of this relationship is, but that's not really, I mean, you wouldn't have to have a relationship with him to no. want his job, I, right? I want power from him. Yeah. Because he has power. Yeah. Uh, and he is, right now, the one in, not in charge, because Emperor's in charge, but he's right. okay. the guide of magic and supernatural things. I want to be the guide of supernatural magic things. Okay. Is it fair that, <clears throat> um, do you have the type of relationship where he might ask you to do things? Oh yeah, I would no. think so. Yeah, okay. Like, Bad dragon why not? things. Yeah. Bad dragon things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, great. He would never great. get his hands great. dirty. <laughs> and by hands, I mean claws, by like going yeah. underground yeah. to do something. He wouldn't even fit, and he's not, <laughs> yeah. as I've been told, isn't gonna shrink himself. He's not gonna shrink himself, he's that's true. That's, so true, that's true. He's like, yo. It's true. If no he, deal yeah. with this. I'm so like, this this I, building has a roof. You have to go in and <laughs> go in there. Go, go fetch me this drink. All right, buddy. Like, I'm going to get that but dragon not from drink. from the Royal Tea Master because he sucks at his job. <laughs> so That's his so palace, by the way, mm -hmm. which is also somewhere in the city, oh. um, is, a, is a big circular um, palace, and it's open on the top. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he, you know, can fly in and out of his palace that way. And he'll, you know, his, uh, I have this image in my mind of he decides to take off, you know, he just kind of stands up on his haunches and puts his four claws on the lip, you know, and pushes himself and accelerates into the air. Majestic. It's pretty yeah, glorious pretty thing. Glorious. Yeah. 
pretty, pretty it's glorious. Imagine so many rocks falling Just off of the side. Yeah, He's like, I, whatever, I, I, I don't yeah. care. Collateral no, damage. No, no. They and, shouldn't be around my house. Uh, get off yeah. my yard, kids. Yeah, yeah. There's... get off my lawn. <laughs> Uh, you also have a relationship with Shaheen? Yes. Uh, the way my magic that I do most of my magic is with enchanting and item crafting, specifically jewelry, because while well, I'm not wearing it now, I'm going to have a full set of rings and earrings. Heck yeah. And Shaheen happens to find things that may have fallen from people's pockets. Okay. Or fell off the truck. Fell off a truck. <laughs> He's a fencer. We know he, where he got him. Yeah. 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 Okay. He, he fences things and then I get them yeah. for a cheap price. Got it. Well, um, yeah, yeah, that's what he tells you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Aww. Yeah. Has okay. To choose Great. To keep believing. <laughs> um, relationships for you. Yes. Um, well, I have my my brother. Yep. Reese. Yep. Um, he is a really pretty. <laughs> It's a normal thing to say about your brother. And, and elves. I, that's, that's about it. That, I mean, he's not the brightest. Um, he's nice, not got a good head for like ruling. Um, he is uh, a, an elf of leisure. He likes to just swat about. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of responsibilities. Okay. I want his life. Yeah, that's All right. nice elf and life. he's back in Direwood? He's in the Direwood. Yep. Yeah. Okay. When? Uh, Wynne is, uh, she is an elf and she runs the um, apartments that uh, I have in Saratov. Right. I don't stay within the, the capital structure um, because... The, the palace. The palace itself because yeah. I don't want yeah, yeah. people to be listening in on what right. I am doing. So Wynne, Wynne keeps uh, uh, all of that... But you don't come to town. I mean, is this like a family apartment? Yes. I mean, it's kind of like a, a yeah, yeah. family so she, estate. So Wynn lives there. Is she elf or human? She's an elf. Yeah. Okay. So she um, uh, she lives there. She takes care of the, the estate, and yeah. you guys let other people use it. Yeah, I think know. she's um, she's pr she's probably older than I am. I think she's she's been around my whole life, kind of a thing. Okay. Managing wow. The estate. Older than you are. Yeah. That's yeah. really old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a lot of stuff she's about my age. She's probably, probably a grim person, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. she's not the happiest. But well, she probably hasn't been job. here the whole time. No, I don't think so. There probably hasn't been, probably wasn't need to have, probably wasn't a need to have an apartment in Saratov. When no, it was I just a she, Russian she town. Probably, you know? Yeah, she was probably in, like, back in the elven mm. capital until yeah. this had a need, and then she went there to, to do that. Okay, and you have, let's, Good. Let's do Tama first. Do you have a relationship with Tama? I do. The Council of Economics. Yep. Tama um, Swift. Yeah. Not T A Swift. You notice that we changed <laughs> his name. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I have a new. Uh, everybody saw. It. I handed out a new um, console sheet. Did everybody get that? I, I did not. I did not get that. Uh, Who did you hand it out to? Well, I thought I left Me? it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I have it. Did you take oh, the whole yeah, pile? Oh, I only have the one. <laughs> I took the whole pile, but the What'd pile was of one. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we got yeah. it. Yeah yeah, 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 we got it. Yeah. It just, no, no, I just wanted you each to have one because it's an update to the one you had before, uh, and it has all the council uh, members, all the consuls there, and um, it also uh, has a little bit about th about them, like little personality type, like Ooh. who they are, and also okay. um, some rivals. <sighs> to the council, cons the consuls who are player characters. So only one of you, that's Lexi. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a guy named Fleming Stierna. Uh, his description is nasty, cruel, Oof. sadistic <clears throat> effer. Mm -hmm. He created gulags <laughs> and the Kulak Troika, which is also called the Fist, which runs around and hunts criminals using supernatural means, whatever means is necessary. You know, the top FBI uh -huh. most wanted list type thing. Um, yeah. Like he went yes, beyond do. the idea of what is the penal code to enforcing the penal code in places where he didn't think it was being enforced sufficiently. Ooh. And he also built a torture museum in um, oh. uh, Saratov. For funsies? Uh, yeah, Gulag Museum, <laughs> yeah, for funsies. Yeah. But he, no, he, he would say it's like, it's important to let people understand the penalties for yeah. violating the penal code. 
So my question to you is, did he step down peacefully? Did he die? No. Did I? He was too nasty even for Cordava. Hey. <laughs> Cordava had him um, uh, forced him to retire. Uh, did I have part of that campaign in Cordava's ear to maybe suggest that that guy should retire? If you want, you can. <laughs> sure, you can put that in your backstory. Yeah, I mean, you you are establishing that you are a manipulative person. So why yes. not? sees that <laughs> she has Let's never that... killed someone with her own two hands <laughs> that's right because she's smarter than Fleming okay <laughs> <laughs> that's why she's got his job <laughs> well he's still around <laughs> oh, oh. Unfortunate. I'm sure that won't come into play and yeah. he's enjoying a happy retirement not yeah. worrying about me <laughs> well he does like do uh Tours of the torture museum and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Is he a docent now? <laughs> He's like, Come on through. You look to your left. This is like a life for anyway. I made this. You're welcome. Some of right. you may know someone who was tortured on a device like this. Uh, let's go back to Toma. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Toma Swift is, um, yes, Aww. he's the Imperial Consul of Economics. Uh, he is also a lover to Sybil Sarari, which is a very prominent council member uh, who what? is in charge of monuments, Imperial mo monuments, constructing mm. of civic monuments to the Emperor and maybe other people that deserve it. <laughs> okay? Yes. And uh, he's from Emil, so that's our French. Mm. And you also have another relationship. I do. It's his sister, um, and she is a, a lover of mine. Okay. Mona. Mona. Human. Human lover. Yes. That's totally fine. Just don't marry her. I would never. <laughs> Humans are delightful. Yes. You can have your companions. Not yeah. allowed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. I know my place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. good, <laughs> good. Great. Okay, so we've covered your relations. And um, Lexi, your relations. Yes. Hosan, we talked about a little bit. Mm -hmm. He is, yeah. Uh, he's, by the way, um, Ma'at, which is Egyptian, basically. Mm -hmm. And I imagine our which relationship, because it's not romantic, but at this point, he and I actually have a very, very good, like, working, civil, and, like, friendly personal relationships we see eye to eye on a lot of things like because she is at this point sincerely invested in set and that belief and great uh that commitment to that god and so she supports him and they do work together a lot so it's yep. a strong relationship that's fantastic yep uh that fits with um everything mm -hmm. so it's perfect uh also she has uh farad reza who was her twin brother. Uh, they have not seen each other or spoke to each other or had any contact since they were teenagers when she joined the cult. He did not join the cult with her and has not heard or seen from him since. So is he still living in Hakamanish? No idea. She does not. Uh, do you, okay. like, like, do you, I, don't, I don't know if that's something no, that's like, fine. if my character wouldn't know, do you want me to fill that no, in or do I no, just? No, you don't have to. Um, Cause she I will does say mechanically, know. Yes. as Burning Wheel, as a relationship, you have the right to see him. Oh, okay. So you can say, my brother just showed up. Okay, Ooh. cool. Okay, that's fine. So you, you'll, you'll, yes. and then as you, uh, and I'll let, since Maybe it's not an impulse. Maybe he along the way too. <gasps> uh, and I, you know, and there's back and forth about how much information, how much do I control NPCs versus yeah. you and relationships. Well, I have a lot of control over Hulsan, but you'll have a lot of control over your brother. Cool. At least until I get to know him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, for this point in her character development, she yeah. has not seen or heard from him yeah. since. Yeah, big, yeah, okay. No well, idea. Yeah, so you can pull him in at some point. Um, yes. I love and, a sleeper NPC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Uh, and finally, Really and awesome. really I cool. now that I have seen this with Fleming, I would switch him out, but I don't think I had enough relationship points for how important Fleming is. Right? Oh, do you want to have Fleming? You want to for uh, my add... hatred rivalry relationship? <laughs> I will just let you have it because I think yes. that's cool. <laughs> so I have Fleming, as we recovered. Um, yeah. But no, the other that's... one that I wrote in because I had like two relationship points left, and I just wanted a rivalry, and I didn't have enough points to make an important one. Um, his name is Ronald. He is the palace tea master, and I hate him because he does not make tea the way we make it back home in mm -hmm. Hakmanamesh, mm -hmm. even though I've asked many, many times, and I have told him to his face how much I hate his tea. How, we don't does, how does he make it that is so wrong? Bland. 
bland. Like, Not spicy doesn't enough. steep it bland. properly. Like, just, like, doesn't, like, really, there's, like, no real flavor. He adds a lot of, like, dairy. I was going to say, too <laughs> much cream, it'll ruin your tea. So much. It's, like, instead of flavor, he just adds cow milk. Okay. When you could add <laughs> flavor. So. Got it. <laughs> and he continues to serve it to her that way and will not make adjustments. And she continues yeah. to rant about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the only thing that gets her really riled up that isn't serious. Like, otherwise, she's like stone face. She's poker, like, poker face is one of her, like, she's a poker face person. But right. that tea comes and... Mm, gets her heated. Gets well, her if heated. I ever have to be in a duel of wits with you, I'm okay. just going to ask him to give you tea. That's, yeah. that's the weakness. There it is. All right. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. I love it. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm looking at... Um, you have... Well, there's so many questions I want to ask because I love delving into uh, backstory, more about, you know, romantic interests, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But let's... Um, Let's save some of that for another time, and uh, let's get into some other things. Okay, well, as you know, uh, the purpose of tonight is to um, get to the death of Gradava mm. and where you were, that sort of thing. Um, I want to tell you, um, I want to tell you something that's that we're leading up to for the end of the session okay. to give you a little time to think about it. Okay, um, at the end of the session. So, back up. One question that I've had to think a lot about is, given that the Council of Consuls is like 20 people, and in the, in the most we'll ever have of the player characters, there's five consuls, mm -hmm. five player characters who are on the council. The, how do I DM what happens at the council? Mm. And mm. so, especially since I'm not going to have all of you there, and mm. I don't want to role play the other 15 <laughs> all at once. I, I love to role play them individually. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me, I'm very much looking forward to that. <laughs> very much looking forward to that. There's a whole reason I'm doing this. So I get to role play Sybil, <laughs> Lao Froth, <laughs> Hulsan. Anyway, um, so the way I'm going to do that is that there will occasionally be in our session, probably every session perhaps, is that the next council meeting, I'm gonna tell you what the agenda of the next council meeting is going to be, mm -hmm. okay? What topics are gonna to come up? And you, I'm looking mainly at you because it may not yeah. include the two of you, but the consuls. Uh, when this topic comes up, uh, and at the end of the session, I'm gonna say, okay, out of these topics, pick one, and then we're gonna change seats. <laughs> and you're gonna come over here and sit here. I'm gonna close the computer so that you're centered to the camera. Oh, so powerful. And you're gonna talk about, you're gonna make a statement about a topic, like for or against or warning or whatever. You're gonna, like, there's gonna be some, some of those, one of those topics, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm gonna tell you now what those topics are gonna be in the first council meeting, which is gonna be an emergency session. Oh, my notes. <laughs> for reasons. Uh, well, yeah. there, it's going to be very, uh, one of the topics is going to be uh, Amandela, who is head of palace security, is going to give a briefing on how the hell did the emperor get assassinated, okay? Mm -hmm. like, like, she's going to talk about that. And she is going to ask the council for broad latitude in interrogating mm -hmm. basically anyone and everybody, and she's going to um, want permission to interrogate all the council members, that nobody is um, immune to this. Okay? So you'll be able to make a statement about that if you like. Or um, Tarsus, who is a council member, Amandela will be a guest. She's not a council member. Um, by the way, she is the daughter of a council member, though. She is the daughter of Zoom. Who is the head of the Pentavolos? Bonus points. Anybody know what a Pentavolo is from your games, other role playing experiences in Chaldea? Anybody? I feel like they're not great Six people. Something mm -hmm. to do with five. Uh, they're the <laughs> referees of the hunt. Oh, yeah. Our Pentavolos. Yeah. So Hajra, Wilhelm. They have really uh, fun robes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have black and silver. Yeah, he is the head of that guild. 
Ah, uh, okay. yeah. Real question to clarification yeah. on Amandela's yeah. request. Yeah. Uh, does that kind of interrogating include like torture interrogation or is it really intense interviewing? She's, uh, it will be broad discretion on interrogation. Um, I'll say that it will come up. Uh, she will be relying on the assistance of the psionic syndicate. Oh, that's not great. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Am I not supposed to know that? <laughs> I think by the name no, you can I think, infer. I think everybody <laughs> and like context clues. Or... Yeah, it it will be a, a psionic probing of your mind to find out everything you know about the emperor's death. Super. Oh. You know what? And I think no, she's and... here for it. Actually. <laughs> All right, all right, okay. Uh, so that's one topic. Okay. Yeah, the other topic was that, oh, uh, second topic is that Tarsus, who is the head of the military, kinda, so this is a point that will come up, is that Emperor Cordova is very proud of his legions, which are Roman-style legions, and he has like 20 of them stationed all over the world. Each legion is run by a legatus, who has two Drazeldar at his command, and they're always, they're all men, it's very chauvinistic and racist, they're all human men um, in the Legion. And um, uh, technically, all the Legati are sworn and obey the Emperor. Emperor's, Tarsus is, is the Legatus of the first, of the Imperial Legion, and uh, he's like, which is a super legion, is a double strength legion, is based here at Ceratop. He is on the Council of Consuls. He is a de facto number two in command. But um, kind of a, uh, it's not too difficult, not too big of a spoiler, but not all the legati are going to listen to what Tarsus has to say in the future. Uh, that will mm -hmm. be a, there will be a sub theme in this story about the various legions and how they respond to um, they might have, you know how you all had different opinions about mm -hmm, who should mm -hmm. who should rule the empire? They might have different opinions as well. And they have armies. Yeah. <laughs> it makes your opinion a lot more powerful when you have an army. Well, being on the council is also very powerful, just a different type of power. Uh, so that that is, um, uh, so, so he is going to um, request uh, martial law that the legions uh, across Chaldea have also broad, powers to um, force, uh, you know, to make sure that everybody stays peaceful and loyal and um, riots are squashed, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's, um, oh, and then the third topic is Bogoslav is going to, um, he's bringing it forth. I mean, basically there's going to be a move to summon an emergency session of the Senate. Two months out, all senators here in Saratov to um, uh, to decide how to proceed in the with the emperor's death. Yes, I have a question. You have a question. As yes. a magic -y type person, mm -hmm. um, the Drazeldar swore an oath to the emperor or, or listened to the emperor. Correct. Drazeldar or the, 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 the legions? Drazeldar. Oh yeah, the Drazeldar do too. The big horrifying guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are the legions are two separate things. Yes. The legions each yeah. have two Drazeldar. But I'm saying the Drazeldar swore their oath to the emperor. To Kordava. To, to Kordava. As best you know. That I know. They don't talk to people. But <laughs> without the emperor. <laughs> That's my curious. I'm so, I'm so glad somebody finally <laughs> like, cares about the question of this series. What happens when the emperor dies? <laughs> yes, Bryce, you cut to the heart of the What are they going to do? Kill what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Bryce gets a gold star. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Points is just, no, just no, it's just a gold star. Oh, okay. It's just a, you just put it on your character sheet. Okay. It does, so, yeah. It's listen, just a gold. if I had known, I, brought a, I would have brought stickers. I know. There you I go. Always brought you do I need. I need gold stars. I will bring yeah. stickers. Production like coordinator. Yes, <laughs> I will order. Making a note. Order stickers. <laughs> order gold star stickers. Yes. yes. Okay. And frowny faces. Okay. And frowny Only faces. Yeah, specifically. That's fair. You're the yeah. gold star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why we balance each other. Yeah. I'm on it. Okay, so that's right. That's okay. So at the end of this session, we will end by um, Lexi, at least, and eh, maybe somebody else, uh, getting to weigh in on one of these topics. 
Ooh. And I'm going to do that for each of the players, each of the, the other two groups, right? Mm -hmm. Every player. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think it'll be fun to cut those together because yeah. they'll be without overlays. They'll be a little bit more cinematic. Um, mm. The camera shot we're going to use on the Twitch stream will be without overlays. So I have a full screen of you talking up with the computer away. We're getting and, um, fancy. That'll be fun. Wow. And it'll, it'll be okay. kind of a, I'll create sort of a recap of the council meeting. I'll yeah. say what happens. But stitch into the video, various oh, players' man. comments. Isn't like that cool? It. Yeah, I, I think love that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there will be no voting, by the way. I think uh, I explained that earlier. Yeah. 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 Every once in a while, somebody says, okay. talks about a vote Ooh. on the but council. You said There's no, no voting because there was a god emperor. But yeah. now that there isn't one, do we have voting now? No. When the, in the emperor's absence, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right. This, the, the uh, Bogoslav Tiamir, I mean, is in charge. That feels suspect, but yeah. that. Does it? It does. does it really does. Does. It feels think, that you way. You think have. somebody might object? Questions. Too bad you're not on the council, I Sarah. Know, that you is don't a get to <laughs> two Bogoslav. <laughs> <laughs> if you object, Holson looks at you and, so, and gives you the evil eye. Uh -uh. Don't object to that. Don't you dare. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> we okay. have words later. <laughs> Have stabs later. Uh, just gonna slowly. We're circling into the moment. We're circling into the moment. <laughs> so you, um, did you just pull out a sock puppet? There's so yeah, many like, other things I want to oh. talk about, but I think we got to get to the moment. Um, okay. This is the moment. <laughs> so, the death moment. Uh, the Someone's assassination ready. of Cordava is gonna happen in the middle of the night. Mm. On a certain night. Obviously, you don't know what's happening, but oh, I'm just yeah. telling you, yeah. as the time of day. Um, I'm going to ask you where you are, um, for, I'm going to start with you, Lexi, because mm -hmm. you're going to have a decision to make right off the bat. Okay. Um, and also, I don't know if it matters in this game setting, but what Anumian is in the sky? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Mm. Yeah. That's my girl. <laughs> Lexi, yes, girl. you yeah. get a gold star. Oh, Bryce, yeah. Bryce make a, a note. Yeah. Make a note. Just make a note. We'll get you the actual stars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta yeah, keep yeah. track of them. Yeah. It's gotta be on your character. Yeah. There no will have to be a section on your character sheet. No one that I got a gold star if we don't write it. It's on camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a gold star. Yes. Uh, the, uh, was. When, I mean, in all fairness, Sarah asked me too, but she's a DM. She's used to it. I mean, I, I, I expect m Thanks, more babe. difficult yep. my, observations. My, mine from, don't count, the, the, and I understand. Uh, it's a higher bar for you, <laughs> Sarah. It's a higher bar. She asked me earlier, like, what is the new in the sky? And I'm like, I'm not going to tell anybody. Let's see if anybody brings it up. Yes. <laughs> good job, Lexi. So good job. Uh, Phoenix. Ooh. Well, that's scary. So, so who's being born at the same time he dies? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Oh. But also, not mechanically, asshole. what does that do for our roles? Uh, if you have a role, let me know. But I think the first time you have a role, it may not be. We'll like see. Like Phoenix we'll might see. not be Solon's guy. We'll it see. Might not be yeah, Phoenixy. See. Uh, Phoenix is about rebirth. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, ch radical changes in your life, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, death mm -hmm. of your old life, beginning mm -hmm, of your new life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, it doesn't and, seem and like it fits. This no. night, by the way, is on the cusp of whatever's after Phoenix. Mm. Uh, this night that Kurava dies is at the end of the week of Phoenix and the beginning of the week of spring. Oh. The week of spring is about planning. <laughs> <laughs> planning for the year. You know. <laughs> Setting your, creating, what are your plans for this year? Mm -hmm. What do you expect to get done this year? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to yeah, assassinate yeah. next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to assassinate next? <laughs> I is right. it Ronald? Do this. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald! <laughs> I'm coming for you, Team Master. So, where? So, Lexi. Oh no. Where do you live? Let's start off. Did you get a? I fine? have a, um, like an estate. What's it called? Like it's like it's not like a palace, but like a nice moderate estate. Yeah, moderate estate. You have a moderate estate. I okay, do. so Summer City. Okay, great, good. By yeah. the way, excellent. Um, you have so. Uh, where are you the night? That, are you home? The night that Cordava dies? Um, I would say unless Holson has called on me or unless mm -hmm. I have re feel like I've received some kind of summoning or vision from set, otherwise I would be at home in my modern Yeah, let's state. just say early in the evening before it's happened, mm -hmm. you haven't received any summons, you haven't received any omens, nothing like that. Yeah. It's, it's chill, you're in the evening. Then, yeah, uh, she doesn't go out and party. She's you're, not a... You're not, you know, with a lover somewhere else. No, or she is actually out of the town uh, aromantic or... and asexual. So aromantic and asexual. She's just okay. Home, Great. probably praying. 
moisturizing, yeah. drinking good tea, because yeah. she has good tea at her place. Moisturizing and right. right. Okay, great, great. Love it. Okay, <laughs> so, so um, I did you, uh, uh, what is your protocol? If you get a message, urgent message to build a night? Yes, is somebody she is authorized to come wake you up? 100%. She is, she's a working, like this is her life. This yeah, is it. Okay. So you have a, uh, whoever is authorized to wake you up mm -hmm. at about um, four in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, you get an urgent summons to get to uh, the main temple. Oh no. ASAP. Yep, she, Books. no hesitation. She um, prays while she's moving, but like she knows not to play with an urgent summons. Like she knows, yeah. like I assume that's not normal. Like no, this is probably not normal. No, yeah, so no. she prays while she's moving, but she makes sure she gets out that prayer to set, you know, for order, for guidance, you know, for peace. And, and there is, um, uh, there is, now the Imperial Palace, you know, this will be important for all of you to know, the Imperial Palace has multiple ways of getting in and out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just like, it's huge, right? it's right. massive. So mm -hmm. the palace, and I say palace, I mean the palace grounds, mm -hmm. uh, the, the pyramid, that is the big temple of Set is inside the palace grounds, mm -hmm. as is a big military staff. There's also the um, uh, the uh, uh, Hall of Records, which is a dwarven um, a dwarven seneschal that mm -hmm. uh, takes care of that. There is um, a second palace called the uh, Palace of Ambassadors. It's where people like yourself who don't have an apartment in Saratov would stay there. We're going to get to you. You might be there tonight. We'll, we're going to find out. Um, the um, uh, So you are directed to go to the pyramid by a, um, an entrance that is underground and that there is um, uh, there are several sort of hidden ways into the palace, mainly used for staff, like just, you know, um, uh, they have their own checkpoints. It's like, okay, and this is like the priest entrance. You say, come, come by the priest entrance, and it is a way to a place to go that's out in the city, on the other side of the wall, and you come in there. There's a checkpoint. You go underground and you come up in the pyramid. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you do all that. Yep. Okay. So, okay. So that answers the question of where you'll be uh, when uh, whatever happens next. Okay. So, where are you? You have you have really broad freedom here. You can be kind uh, of. When is market day, or is there like a specific market day for selling wares and goods? I got a day job, so. Oh, you go down to the market. I just, well, I have a workshop as yeah, well as yeah, I have my yeah, villa. Yeah, yeah okay. So. Yeah. So I'm, you have a villa. Yeah. Yep, and you have a, a workshop in the villa for making things, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Or, or do you? Or is your workshop in the market? I was you? thinking workshop might be in the market, like a, it's a store slash workshop. Yeah. So like, yeah. like make things. Come see how magic is made. Shield your eyes, kids. Anyway, here's a poison. <laughs> I, here's a ring. A poison um, ring. <laughs> so I'm on board with this. I do. I do want to point out it's a little anachronistic, but I'm okay with okay. it. Like like you know, as powerful as you are of a <laughs> wizard, it's like Gandalf having a shop in uh, Hobbit Town. You, you're okay with that? I'm okay I mean, with yeah, that. I, I, I figured. Love. Yeah. I figured we gotta, like, I'm a retired yeah. teacher. Yeah. So. You're I'm all about teaching kids. A man of the people? A, a, a person of the people? Yeah, I'm a person of the people. I'm here right. to like, make people yeah. happy. Oh, look, right. you kid lit lame. Here, let's make you a robot leg. Uh, not a robot leg. Wow. Let's make you a walking Bridges stick. We're changing yeah. everything now. <laughs> Robots. <laughs> Surprise! Not a robot leg. Uh, yeah, yeah. A walking stick. Why not? Uh, and is and so do you stay at your workshop at night or do um, you I just... stay at my villa unless like a market day is coming up or a day where I'm expecting like a lot. Oh, of so you're traffic. not down there every day. You're no, like like no. when there's a major market day, yeah, major like market like day. you know like maybe so it's a couple like those times shops a in month. LA that they just like to have open well, every once in a while. Yeah. They're like I'm making well, hours, popsicles. When I feel like <laughs> it. Well, I'm gonna say this is up to you. Okay. Is, is it a market day the next morning um, or are you at home? Are you home or at the workshop? Oh. It, it, I am probably at the workshop because it's about to be spring, so oh, plan yeah. for the future. Yeah. So okay, like, all right. What, all right. Yeah, all right. what am I gonna work on? What's my new project gonna be? All right, all right, okay. So, uh, great. 
Excellent. Can okay. I just laugh about the fact that there was only robot leg or walking stick <laughs> and nothing in between? Nothing in between. <laughs> uh, prosthetics are really hard. That's yeah. not my skill but, set. Uh, like, robot leg you're working on it, it, but you I'm haven't quite gotten yes. there yet. It's hard. Or walking. There's yeah. like such yeah. a gamut in between yeah. you could have gone with. Well, no, the, sorry. the walking Keep stick going. has a small ring of levitation or something on it, so it helps okay. that leg, we'll say. Okay. So, um, <laughs> you have this relationship with Laufrau. Yes. Yeah. And you feel that it has the relation that he has been more distant in recent Aww. months. Aww. What what do you what did you do that um, <laughs> caused What's it that might have like yeah, um, kind Good of um, created an obstacle in the relationship <gasps> with uh, Laufroth? Self-reflection time. I probably didn't back one of Lolfroth's plays. Like, <gasps> oh, he was well, like, he didn't eat you. That was nice of him. <laughs> well, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, he would eat you. Okay, <laughs> you were just taking out a senator, he'd be like, done. Sure. Oh well, poop. Then it wasn't that. Okay, okay. That. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it, it's one of those. I cared too much and I worked too hard. <laughs> yeah, one of us. <laughs> He no, I mean back he one of his plays because it's me. I, yeah, I mean he doesn't have many plays to. Okay. I mean, like, or maybe you were slow. Yeah. So we did a, we did say that he maybe asked you to do things from time to time, yeah. um, and so maybe you were just kind of slow at doing what he yeah. asked you. To Somebody do, in chat like, said maybe he didn't cherish him enough. <laughs> <laughs> give him enough tribute. Like, like, did you forget to give him his goodnight thank kiss? You. This is morning. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you've just, just like the walking you've been a little distant lately, lately in the middle. and um, uh, feeling a little. Uh, by the way, his uh, you have been to his palace, I assume. I would. Yeah. yeah, yeah, his palace is pretty cool. I'll have to get you a write up on it. It's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, and um, he has. Uh, three apprentices, by the way, who are closer than you are Ooh. to him. Oh boy! And they <sighs> they work for him directly. How long have they been working uh, for him? One of them is a dogman, which is like a canine upright canine race. I'll need to know their things. names and their habits. Dogman's <laughs> name is Cerberus. Their schedule. Their schedule. <laughs> Cerberus is very crude. Their allergies. Like he he refuses to wear clothing. He goes nude all the time. Wow! All and right. Scratches. <laughs> himself. You could replace and, that one. Uh, just, yeah, you know, he chews on a bone. You know, he's very vulgar. Wow, you lost out to that guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, all froth respects power. I just gotta yeah, they're all him. badass with the sorcerers, that's okay. for sure. Yeah. Uh, one of them is an orc by the name of Makala. And she is, of course, also very nasty and um, Nude? evil. <laughs> hatred. So the third one is a high elf by the name of Ventus. <gasps> oh no. Oh, I that makes the dream bomb. work, you guys. Oh, oh, already hated get rid of that one. <laughs> That's the one who's going That's back. That's the one. Teamwork, teamwork anyway. for murder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What kind of so I'm kid? thinking maybe you were an apprentice at one time if you yeah. wanted to be, but you're yeah, not oh, now. Oh, like, like so earlier in your career, but you've kind of graduated from it in oh, a way, okay, right? I mean, better. you're you like seven life pass. I mean, you're... I was an apprentice. Yeah, and okay. maybe it kind of worked. Maybe, it, maybe whatever reason it stopped being an apprentice role. Okay. Yeah, and um, uh, uh oh, <laughs> you could do better not having to do what I say. So well, it is a full. Lord. It is a full time job being. An <laughs> oh, apprentice. Okay. I mean, he sends okay. his apprentices on like full time missions. Like, oh, you want a mission, and you're back. Okay, here's your next mission. Okay. Yeah. Right. Not really always pr well conducive to having your own goals. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. You yeah, good? Yeah, no, I yeah. like it. You're vibing on all that? I'm assuming Everything Ventus good? replaced me because Ventus. Ventus. He's the worst. Yeah. I think that's fine with me. Yeah. That's fine yeah. with me if you yeah. want to do it. Yeah, it's, sure. It makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now yeah. that I think about it, uh, Lol Froth maybe wanted more eyes and ears around, and that is kind of one of my things, is yeah. listening to the flies on the wall. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. He, um, yes. Did Lol Froth um, suggest Ventus to Emperor Cordova? as the warden, or did that happen in the other order where he became the warden and then Lothrath took him in? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know if there's a canon answer to that. I would have to ask Steve, but I like the idea that Lothrath- I mean, Steve's in chat, let's find yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna throw that question back to chat and yeah. see if uh, Steve weighs in. I've got a question in. for you. All right, 
In the meantime, I would also be in chat, but I take notes on my phone so I can control F later. <laughs> <laughs> you don't put the Fs in chat. I, I do when it's act when it's uh, nearly departed and mm, I'm not mm, taking mm, notes mm, because mm. Sersha doesn't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this game, on the other hand. <laughs> uh, so he has, by the way, um, your. Like how, uh, you know, the question of like, how, how do you, or how are you ever in the palace, mm -hmm. right? Um, Lafroc just sends you in. Like, he has you, um, one of your duties mm -hmm. still, even though you feel a little more distance from him, mm -hmm. uh, he expects you to be in the palace during council meetings. Fair enough. And so even if you're not, though you're not on the council, the council is like 20 people, but when council meetings happen on the days of council meetings, which by the way, is on the day of the first day of each week. Mm. Oh, that's gonna say the so there's number. supposed to be a council okay. meeting tomorrow relative to Kurdava's death. Um, that means we need to cancel, FYI. But, <laughs> Surprise. Um, there's this little um, note on the door. So, canceled due to so, Emperor's assassination. <laughs> so, the, you know, so there's like 20 council members and there's like 200 people gotcha. that are like in a big hall outside running messages, sending notes in, aren't allowed to come in, gotcha. but they can advise, uh, they're politicking. Oh, like yeah. the, 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 the people in the various departments politicking with each other, like council members, like you can tell whoever works for you, go politic with the dwarves and try and whatever, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that sort of thing's happening. Okay. And there's catering and you know, music and you yeah. know, it's a it's party. A party. It's a party, it's Always a ball. a party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Why are you in town? Well, I mean, let's be fair. Ventus is <laughs> screwing the pooch <laughs> on a lot of things that are going on. Um, but then also, like, my people are are having some problems down here in Dire West from the neighboring areas, uh, which needs to be addressed. But also, like, I miss my consort, so right. I came to visit. Um, how long has it been since you were last? Given that you're 500 years old. Yeah, a couple years, probably. That's that quick, that recent. I think, I mean, I think that it's escalated in Dire West, or I would, I usually only come in every, like, 10-ish. Yeah, yeah. But you things could have also, gotten bad. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. So I um, think, yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and just to explain what's happened here to chat, Dire West, um, uh, she is the Atharka... Dire Wood, which has two geographic areas. They're just geographic designations, Dire East and Dire West. A dire, and, and they're not well connected. If you can see the map, which you probably can't very well, but there's, um, uh, Dire East is this main part of the woods, and then Dire West is like this sliver. And there's this narrow little, sort of gap here. It's between like upper and lower Michigan. <laughs> it's just a little. Yeah. And, this gap, there's humans on one side and the uh, Chilidesir, or I, can't, uh, I tried to fake the pronunciation, probably got it wrong. It's a spider kingdom. Lots of spiders. Uh, yeah. Intelligent giant spiders. Always spiders. Yeah, well, yeah. hey, they're cool. But the elves know how to kind of get along with them. They're very evil and very cannibalistic, but the elves just kind of know how to work them. Yeah, they're fine. They're, yeah, they're doing their thing. They're the Sackville Bagginses. <laughs> the dire wood. Yeah. Yeah. Deal with them later. Uh, but it does, um, in Dire West, there have been um, uh, lots of hunters who have been um, allegedly being paid bounties to kill elves. Yeah. <gasps> Not great. And uh, there has recently been a scenario where a elf who you know named Shadden, mm -hmm. Shadden um, recently had something of a victory in a way, some prominence. Um, him and some human uh, um, gravers killed a Dio, which is a race of, of um, I kind of like inspired by the predator, you know, like mm -hmm. these really tough, monstrous, but intelligent creatures that from some other, who God knows where, who um, have started showing up in Dire West. And they're, one of their main things about Dio's is that they hate elves. I mean, they just hate elves. 
Nice. And they're really good at all the things elves are really good at. Mm. <laughs> like hiding and sneaking and Ooh. Oh yeah. It's so it's very time. unnerving to an have elf. an an enemy <laughs> who can uh, do what who, you can do. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really, really wow. sucks. I saw, I saw yeah. the movie, so I'm just going to cover myself yeah. in mud and hope that that helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all have been yeah. the big man on campus for too yeah. long. <laughs> okay, so I can understand. Um, and there have been rumors that these, um, this, these anti-elf activities are sponsored by the Legatus of the Seventh <gasps> Legion yeah. named Legatus Civitas, uh, who is human, who has a castrum right here. Okay. Ventus was supposed to take care of this. Yeah, he oh. sure was. Yeah. So you're here, you're in Saratov because of that? Yes, okay. because of the Dire West situation. Right. It has become dire in the Dire West. <laughs> so, I mean, what Spiders do you... Spiders and the predators and the bounty hunters. Oh, There's a lot happening. Is it fair to say, I mean, you are the ruler of a kingdom in Chaldea and the emperor, I mean, is it fair to say you're here to talk to the emperor? Absolutely. And you're, you're here to... Um, so let's say that you have successfully made an appointment with the emperor. Okay. Um, for, and um, uh, were admitted to speak to council. Great. To bring your, um, whatever your concerns are, and also a personal meeting with the emperor as well. And the, uh, and of course it's scheduled for the, Day after he dies. <laughs> this is really inconvenient for you. So inconvenient. I traveled all the way down here. By the way, um, traveling, you have access to a limited amount, of, a limited form of teleportation. Great. A high elf by the name of Tilith. Okay, T I L I T H. He can teleport, but it's not just like, oh, Teleporting, by the way, in Chaldea is always a little tricky. It's not just like, oh, it's a fifth level spell and I have it. I'm just going to go wherever the hell I want. No, it's like um, you have to set up two points. And you have to have physically bend to both points. And mm -hmm. you have to and pick a time that's going to happen. And mm -hmm. it's it has some constraints on it. So he um, uh, he teleported you to your home. Great. You arranged it. He yep. did it. Um, this does cost him. And... Um, and it's, you've probably, maybe it's like a one month stay. Okay. Maybe. I'll be like, okay, I'll come back and get you in a month. And maybe that was a week ago. Sure. Does that work for yep, you? Absolutely. Okay. Something, by the way, all three of you should know. To enter the palace grounds, not only do you have to have permission to come into the palace grounds, you also have to be purified. You cannot be in the presence of the emperor without having been purified. Um, I know you two probably aren't going to care much, but I think I'm, very I'm, curious. I'm really poking at Sarah's elf on this here. This is, um, and it, it's basically a ritual bath. Oh, okay. That you have to, you have to be bathed and um, hmm. fresh clothes sure. put on you. Um, you can own clothes that you leave there, but they have to be blessed and everything. It's all... And there's maybe some security stuff that's happening here too, mm -hmm. but um, so for someone like um, Farina who goes there at least weekly, would she probably have her own set of like like a locker, so basically a, with like for, for the people that go there all the time. Yeah, yeah, you actually it's just like you just walk through this one hallway and it has misters. Yeah, like like but she got like a locker of like pre-blessed clothes. Yeah, you can just kind of yeah. change into. You wash your hands real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's streamlined for the worker bees. Yeah. Yeah, the soldiers have their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so cool. is that yeah. something that happens even if you're not going to be seeing the emperor? It's like just in case the emperor just, happens. You, to lay eyes on you, you, you better. You can't go onto the cool. uh, palace grounds without having been purified. Okay. Okay. And it, it is a security measure as much as it is for any sort of show or protocol. Valid. Um, I mean, that you, you you know that as a wizard. You know that as a priest. Um, that there's magic happening in this process. Yeah. Does the magic affect us in any way? No, it's um, uh, magic of... of um, Friendship. Washing away uh, threats. Okay. Okay. Cleansing yourself of threats. Cool. And um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
and also some <laughs> sensing of motives, perhaps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are you devout? Are your intentions pure? That's more on the clerical side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're gonna get that but, I'm very annoyed. But you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna get to do the whole going to the going to the bath, get naked, Super. have an attendant. Love it. You can choose the gender. You can choose the make sure your comfort zone. You know. Gross. Uh, but it's yeah, it, this is very kind of medieval. Uh, it's not. Yeah, you get to you know, the scent, like yeah, lavender. Yeah, I would like it to be nice. I've had a long wood. day. If we could have um, some bubbles, that'd be so, great. Also, sidebar, sometimes Steve got pe- back to us. Yeah. Oh. Ventus was the warden first, and then oh. and then he was taken on as the apprentice. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Um, the uh, uh, Because that process takes time, yeah. you might have come the day before mm-hmm. in birth, uh, your appointment. Yeah. You could come in and go through that process. That makes sense. Um, and then sleep in the Hall of Ambassadors. Okay. And that's, but it's your choice. No, that's, yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. Or you can do it mo- the morning up. It doesn't matter to me, I'm just. I think, I think day before. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so, um, okay, we're getting up. So you get summoned to the temple. Mm-hmm. You're at your workshop, mm-hmm. um, and in, you have a room Yes. You know, in the palace. Yeah. And in the middle of the night. I don't think I'm there alone, BT Dubs. I think. Mona is, I think Mona's been with you back in your apartment. I but, could not bring her with. Uh, in a pure you box. Can, you, you can bring it. Yeah, you can bring it on. <laughs> of course, you can. Yeah. You will bring her in, and her her husband. Yeah, her brother is Tomas. So yeah, is on the council. So yeah, okay. So Mona is. Oh, good. I know. I'm. It's a gift. I, it's it is. <laughs> it is a gift. I'm giving you. A it gift. is a gift. That's <laughs> why you invite me back. <laughs> I love that you're bringing Mona with you. Okay, so Mona is sharing your private apartment in the <laughs> um, Hall of Ambassadors. Jeez. And in the middle of the night, so there's a thing that elves do sometimes. I can't wait to hear. <laughs> yeah. There's a, the most powerful spells mm. that elves can cast. Yeah. Involve being uh, a yeah. spell song mm-hmm. that somebody starts okay. who has the power and status to do it. And all the elves of the world join in the song. Just a lot of singing. <laughs> we love the world. You do a lot of singing. Oh, and practice. in the middle of the night, somebody, <gasps> some elf, and you know all the most powerful elves. I do. You, uh, you're related to some of them. Yeah. And there's other ones. Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, um, I think you would know who it is. Ask Steve. Would you know? Steve? Steve. Would she know the name of the elf that starts the song? We assume it's Ventus until told otherwise. Oh, I must definitely <laughs> like assume it's Ventus. Ventus? Well, well, uh, uh, wow. yeah. What? Ventus? Well, I'm sure. He, well, he, I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, waiting. Yeah, Steve, yeah. Steve. Yeah, 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 no, you give him time. I'm sure he heard Focus. me. I don't think you need to type the question. Yeah, yeah. He better be, he better be listening to every single word. Oh, man. I know he is, yeah. This anyway. was a test. Okay, yeah. so you have, um, uh, this up uh, now. So, regardless of what he says about whether you know who started the song, yeah. Um, at the center, he says yes, Ventus. He said yes, definitely. That no, it's not Ventus that starts the song. Oh. But the question is whether he, she, whether oh, that you I would know. No, yes. Who started the song? I would know. That's what he said. Yes, definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not Ventus. Great. Uh, it? It's a obviously very powerful elven uh, spellcaster named Adaya. Adaya. Adaya Adrelastas. But Adaya's presence in there was difficult to discern. Mm. And most elves who join the choral, it's called the choral, um, probably won't know that she started it. But they will see Shadden. Oh. Who, oh, but, and I, I, oh, I told you that he has a prominence. Oh, yeah, because he, ca- he captured this. He, he killed a, D, a, a Dio. A Dio, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's how he, yeah. Okay, so... Um, and um, 
he is. So you're gonna, I'm gonna do a flashback. Uh oh. Flashback, flashback scene for you. Okay, I'm ready. And you're you're going back in time forty years. Okay. So you're I in Glistenmere. Mm -hmm. And Cordava's army is approaching the citadel. Okay. And he enters his army enters the palace. It's the last lines of defense. Your son, Vian Lianaville, is wielding an elven artifact sword called Luando, which is the light of the elves. Mm -hmm. And he is the most powerful warrior with an elven artifact. If anybody can kill Drazodar, it should be him. He faces the Drazodar, he swings at the Drazodar. The Drazodar grabs the sword and breaks it. Not breaks it, distinguishes it. Oh. And causes the light of the world, light of the elves, to go out. And then, and then the Drazodar kills him. Great. And Kradava steps forward and you surrender. Okay. Don't love that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to roll any dice. I'm just telling you. This Thank is, this is so just much. GM Fiat. This Oof. is history. This Oof. is, uh, yeah, you gained a point of grief that night, I that did. day. Um, afterward, the sword, Luando, the mm -hmm. light had gone out. Yeah. And has stayed out. And has stayed out. And to anybody who looks at it, including Talith and the wisest of the elves and the, and the most powerful uh, seers who've looked at it, the light is out. Except Shadden claims that he can see the light. Mm. In the, in and the it, so we were allowed to keep Luando. They didn't yeah, take it Yeah, yeah, us. yeah. So Talith took it. Talith took the sword to study it. And when he said, no, the light is out, there is no hope, we, I can't do anything about it. But since Shadden believes that there's light still in the sword, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it to him. So he took Lewandil, gave it back to Shadden. Okay. In this elf coral on the night of the emperor's death, as you're sensing all the elves of Chaldea singing this song, and you are too. Yes. You see Shadden with the sword, and the light has returned. Oh. That feels good. And you also notice, by the way, across town on a balcony of another fancy villa, another fancy apartment, is Ariadne. And she's singing as well. I didn't know she was here. And people, and it's kind of good that nobody sees you because everybody's looking at Ariadne. That's right. <laughs> and Look of misdirection. You come Look out of there. it. You come out of it. You come out of this, the whole song thing. And like Mona's like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I do that. <laughs> Spirit over time. Oh, thing. It's, it's just a. Uh, there are. Sounds of violence. You're not hearing any of this. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> just having a little party <laughs> over here. The, uh, well, it was so as you get, as you're traveling to the palace, yeah, yeah, you see Ariadne, who is an elven demigoddess. Pray a little harder. <laughs> up on a balcony of her apartment. She doesn't live here, but she's got an apartment here. I mean, all, everybody does, right? It's a common thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right by the Dwarven Princess's apartment. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah, you just, you just stab it. Oh, there's El Ariadne's up there singing. How often? Like, like, is this a thing where, like, every, like, other week, maybe, you just see the elves doing an elf song, and you're like, No, at least if again. you never, if elf you hang song. out with elves, and you'll see them, you don't see many elves. Okay. I mean, there's not a lot of elves that hang out in your circles. Yeah. Circles of set. In the, in the gold mean, circles. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the circles. And the, yeah. Not a lot of, I mean, there's probably one or two. They're like, you know, freaky weird elves. Yeah. You know, so I imagine she like, she's society. educated enough that she recognizes what's happening, but it's not something she like sees often or is familiar yeah, with. Yeah, just like, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you see Ariadne like, what singing. Are you casting? Do you need like night? a permit for that? Or? <laughs> it's, yeah. No, this is very Are unusual. Are you breaking a law? Yeah. Are you I mean, breaking a law? 
And we Elvin, have a museum I mean, for that. Yeah, Demagos singing in the middle of the night, close to morning, close Do to Do I dawn. know anything about the whole Elvin song magic thing? Ooh. Um, oh. Good question. Oh, wow, we might have our first yes. Roll, yes. Roll, yes. skill yes. test yes. Yes. of the evening. Oh. All right. Oh. Wow, we have it. Yeah. Yes, we should have at least yeah. one die roll tonight. Okay, so the way skill. Wait, tests work and, you know, it's like every RPG, at some point you try and do something and the DM goes, you're going to need to roll for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's called a test. So to do a test, you establish task and intent. Okay. So intent is, what is it that you want to gain? What is it you want to happen that I'm making you roll for? Like, I'm not just saying yes. By the way, I can always say yes. You might, you might jump ahead and say, <laughs> I'm, t I'm <laughs> testing this thing and I might just say yes. Uh, yep. Just to... Uh, deprive you of getting the credit Enjoy. for a test. <laughs> 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 because the way advancement works in the system is by testing. Okay. Right? Okay, so you want to know, you want to understand what's going on with this test, yeah. this thing. I, I would right? like to know about Elvin song. Ma I would assume that song magic is more common knowledge or in the magic Well, how about circle? this? You see Ariadne singing, okay. and you you do know, I will say yes to, you know that elves practice magic by singing. Okay. That's very, you know that, okay. right? And so maybe you're trying to figure out what spell she's, yes. like what, what spell is, yeah. is she what doing? Spell? Is she doing a spell? And if so, what is it? <laughs> is this just mm -hmm. relaxation singing or magic singing? And what magic? <laughs> she's just yeah. out there like, yeah. hello, yeah. Hello, yeah. Hello. <laughs> All right. So, what skill are you going to use? Um, I would think sorcery. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's fine. It's a different category than the way you do. I mean, the mm -hmm. way you cast practice. It's like in D and D. There's mm -hmm. wizards and there's mm -hmm. warlocks that do it a little differently, but it's all magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's uh, elves do magic differently than you do, but mm -hmm. it's still magic. So, to um, understand whether or not. Um, to understand what the spell is, um, I'm going to make this a, um, I think it's called a graduated test. The more successes you get, um, the, the more information you're going to know. And that's, that's cool in the sense that you have a chance to learn a lot of information. It's also screwing you in the sense that you only need an ob one. It's not going to actually help you advance because it's only gotcha. an ob one test. Okay. So, um, uh, anyway. So yeah, go ahead and, and um, what's your skill at sorcery? So my skill at sorcery is six. Okay. Woo! Um, right. Do I get any bonus die for speaking Elvin? No. Okay. And then a fork. What a I fork. mean, a bonus because you speak Elvin and it's an Elvin song. You can understand the words. Yeah, you know, I'm going to give you an, what's called an advantage die All for that. Right. Very good. Very good. It's not quite gold star because it's self-motivated. Is, that like a, but, is it like a but silver it star? Is, Should I it's, it's, silver it's, star? It's something. It's something. Yeah. And yeah. then the way the system works, I think, is uh, this is my first time, so I get to err. If there's any applicable skills that I happen to have, that to I could fork. fork into it. Yeah, that's say, what I'm looking up right okay. now. Um, sorcery, in my, uh, and I'm not going to go to the extent of reading the whole sorcery chapter for this, but sorcery, <laughs> forks, astrology, I astronomy, have. alchemy, aura reading, empyrelia, and demonology are all forks for sorcery. Okay, so I have alchemy, I have astrology, and what was the other? Uh, astronomy, I, aura I, reading. I have aura reading. Okay, um, all right. I think three dice is probably okay. a good limit anyway. <laughs> yeah, that sounds accurate. <laughs> um, so I would even say alchemy probably doesn't make any sense. I am also a little... To fork that in, yeah, but... Right. Okay, by the way, we haven't talked about Arda. We will talk more about Arda later, but I'm going to keep things moving. But I just want to let you know you each have one persona and two deeds. Uh, not deeds. Ooh, ooh, oh, my God. Whoa, Can't right. I, I did not him. say deeds. One persona <laughs> and two fate. So you can... One persona, two, two fate. fate. Yeah. And by the way... Um, I would recommend that you never use your last persona okay. um, if you care about your character dying. Um, I do. Because you can, mm -hmm. um, and I would like you to care about it. I would yeah. like you to care about your character. Uh, you can, if your character dies, mm -hmm. you can, and you have a persona, you can spin a persona to Bring avoid them. it. I have the right to like really screw you over, mm. but you don't die. Okay. Mm. Okay? So don't spin your last persona. Okay. I, I have run games where I've just said, 
you don't start with a persona. There's just one in your pocket the whole time, and I'm not going to let you use it. But I'm not going to be that way. Okay. You guys are adults. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can make just, our choices. Just don't recommend spending a lot so of persona. So the way that. So if you did have persona, if you did use okay. it, you could you would declare it now, and you would add more dice. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, uh, what if I were to use a fate to make it open-ended sixes? Uh, so you would, you can wait until after you roll to okay. decide that. Okay, so let's right. roll the dice. And what it is, every die that's a four, five, or six is a success. One, twos, and threes are traitors. Traitors. Believe yeah. in you. I like to believe in myself. I got a few I successes. Believed in you. I should have believed in you harder. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. That's yeah, on you, that's, Sarah. That's, that, I did there's that. A, there's a yeah. lot of three successes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, if you want to spend a fate, you can roll one more die. Every six lets you roll another die. You spend a fate to make it open ended. Okay. Um, you know, I think I won't use that. I think three successes. Pretty is, good. Yeah, I think that's F good. Feel good about that? Yeah. yeah what um, we're singing about. She's definitely. Okay, so you're going to know that she mm. is uh, spending. You're not going to know it's the worldwide song. Okay. In my mind, the ob was a little higher for that. Okay. But you'll, there is a thing elves can do, and you're going to know this, uh -huh. is that elves, there is a song elves can sing called the Song of Songs. Mm -hmm. And what it does is when another elf is doing a spell song, if you are an elf that knows the Song of Songs, you can sing harmony and give that elf advantage. Oof. Okay. okay. So Ariadne is singing harmony to another magic spell that some other elf is casting. Okay. But I don't know the song. I just know that Ariadne is helping out whatever yeah, the spell right, song exactly. is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That was fun. We got <laughs> to do a dice. Test. What Ooh. the heck? Yeah. <laughs> so many dice. Yeah. It's a good nice. thing you added those three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And I don't think it matters, but you have a routine six. I don't think. Was a skill, your sorcery skill six? Yeah. Yeah. Your routine test doesn't help you at that okay. level. Yeah. Um, the great thing about higher, high level characters, seventh life path characters, is you got all these skills with really high stats. The hard thing, the bad thing, is that it's really hard to advance those skills. You have to go out and do really challenging things. Well, there, there was a roll though. Did anything happen because of the fact that Phoenix was in the sky? Ooh. No. Nothing. That's nothing okay. to do with rebirth. Okay. And I'm going to be a little. Yeah. 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 But that's a it's a good Worth point. Asking. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what Sarah's bringing up is that we have there's a house rule we have for when we play D and D, that if you roll a seven, uh, if you can convince the DM that your action is in line with the Anumian that is manifested that night, it counts as a twenty, which is pretty powerful incentive. Um, uh, we have to figure out a similar house. That's a very Excellent house rule. We have to figure out a fun house rule for <laughs> how to do that, like something like that in Burning Wheel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get the obvious answer would be that you could declare, you get another die roll, you know, another mm -hmm. die. You get a, basically a help die from the Anumian. It's like, hey, I'm yeah. doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, and yeah, I guess that's what it'll be for now. If we think of something more clever, we'll change it later. Okay, so you, um, you that wakes you up. Okay. You see that happening. Um, you're in the um, uh, in in the temple. When you arrive, you see the all the pre it, like like we've never seen this many priests up at now. And um, uh, the uh, you're not sure what's up, but you have to really, you can go talk to Holson. Yeah, that is exactly. I'm assuming that's where my summon came from. Yeah, was hit me directly. Yeah, so that's where I'm going to go. Going to find him. You know. And as long as there's no one more important than me in the way, which there isn't, because the other person more important than me is dead. Um, <laughs> she's, wow. Yeah. The Yikes. Not that she knows life. that yet. Well, um, there is some. Um, there are other really powerful priests. They just weren't on the Council of Consuls. Yeah. So, so there's uh, uh, there's <laughs> Ul talk. Oh boy. <laughs> U H L T O K. Uh oh. Okay. Uh. He is the head inquisitor. Doesn't seem good. He's kind of the <gasps> dark side of the church. Oh no. He's kind of the fanatical, kind of the, and he's, he's definitely your rival. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm for, the light side. I'm the good guy here, everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm the yeah. hero of this story. 
so, so nice. um, you, by the time you got to the palace and you're going and you, you know, just backing up just a little bit, you were hearing noises in the palace, sounds. You've been around long enough. I'm going to say you've p- probably heard the sound at one point. They don't, the Drazzledar don't make much noise most of the time, but mm-hmm. once in a while, one of them will get upset and bellow. And it can shake the ground. What is it that it usually can create makes them upset? Feel it in your chest. Usually, when they that. think that there is a threat to the emperor mm. or to whatever they're guarding, mm. uh, so the Drazzledar are stationed to guard various places in, around Chaldea, and there's the emperor has twenty of them with him in his throne room. I mean, in the palace. Mm-hmm. All 20 of them are making noises and bellowing. You hear these horrible sounds going on. And um, you find Hulsan is uh, looking out at the palace. Mm -hmm. And Ultak is there. And some of the other ones that are like the next level down from you and Mm -hmm. him and Hulsan. um, They're uh, on this sort of open patio area, if you, you know, the pyramid has these patio places, and they're looking over at the palace, and you can't see what's happening over there, but you just hear these uh, bellows of these Drazzledar, and it's, you know, and you're worried that there's, like, the earth is trembling, there's, you're worried that, like, is the palace going to hold up, is it going to crack, is it going to, what's going what's gonna to happen, not, not quite sure, and Hosanna's praying, and so you just start praying with him. I mean, that's, but well, you can do what yeah. you want to do. You have agency, but that's typically what you would do. Yeah, she's, um, before she starts praying, she's actually going to find whoever is closest to her that is not actively praying and grab them and say, what's happened here tonight? Uh, oh, um, the- Speak, come on. It, the, the, uh, the Drazzledar have rebelled against the emperor and killed him. No. You. She's going to find someone else. You. Come here. What's happened here tonight? I mean, it's, that's just, that, I mean, that's what, we don't know. You know, we, we, we didn't see anything. We, we weren't there, but, I it's mean. Rumors. Rumors then. Shoot, yeah, shoot, shoot. Yeah, yeah. And then she'll go pro- approach Halsan. And is everyone around Halsan praying? Or is there, like, like is Ultak praying as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, okay. you know that if you get close to Halsan, he's praying, you're going to be praying. All right, so she does. She's like, yeah, everyone else yeah. here is useless. It's all rumors. I'm not going to go run off. So she yeah. goes and starts yeah. praying with yeah. him. Okay. She does not believe the emperor is dead. She's like, right. children, rumors. <laughs> stupid. Kids. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, as you're coming, um, uh, as you come out of this, and Mona's like, what happened? What? <laughs> Just um, every so often, I, I had to join my elven king. Uh, Elvin Kin and and uh, do. You okay? I'm fine. Do I not look fine? Oh yeah, you got super calm demeanor. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay, great. okay. But she knows you well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I mean, I. This is routine. <laughs> I mean, hard to establish a routine, but yes, this is something that as an elf I do. Regularly, maybe. I don't At least know. once a century. <laughs> At least. <laughs> Done several of these in my lifetime, of course. Yeah, more like a couple. Yeah. Okay. That's several. That's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But she doesn't say that. That's yeah. Peter the DM. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You... Then you start to hear bellows. That's uh, unrelated. The That's unrelated. <laughs> and you're in the <laughs> same complex. You're not in the same building, but mm-hmm. actually you're about the same distances as they are. Um, and uh, it doesn't take long before you're hearing other sounds, shouts, um, bugles, yeah. um, guards, you know, waking up. I want to know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to leave my chambers and go find out what's happening. Yeah, you go look out a window somewhere or... No, yeah. I'm, I want to leave my chamber. I want to go outside toward where the noise is. Right. Uh, okay, so you go 
down, look across the palace yeah. grounds, and you, the noises are definitely coming from inside uh, the palace. And there are uh, uh, the Imperial Palace mm -hmm. and the Palace of Ambassadors, where you are, um, the guards are, are urging you not to go outside. I know, but they're just humans. Yeah, they're also in charge of security here at the palace. What's, uh, well, I would like to ask one. What's, what's going on? Yeah, Why are yeah, you just, keeping we, us inside? We, uh, uh, well, something horrible is happening for your security. Everybody's, it's, everybody's being uh, told to stay inside. Yeah, what is yeah. the horrible thing that has happened? Uh, the Drazodar are on a rampage. This has never happened. We don't know. Uh, and I mean, the guards are clearly terrified. Sure. And like looking over their shoulders a lot. And please, please come go inside. And and is is your kind of not immediately jumping to their orders? More guards are like coming around. You know, like you're getting. You're, you're, sure. You're, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> please back inside. Um. I, do you require assistance? You all seem just, fairly agitated. Oh, uh, we're, we're, we're just... I can get my sword. We're just legionnaires. Yes, I... Our orders are to have everybody stay inside. All right, well, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go back up to my apartment and start putting my okay. stuff on, just right. in case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put your stuff on. Yep. Excellent, excellent. Um, okay, let's... Uh, <laughs> Um, let's see, what time is it? It's almost 8 o'clock. It's almost 8 o'clock. Let's take a short break. My goal is to wrap by 8.30 to 8.45, long in there. That's okay. good for everybody. Yeah. So I think this would be a good time to take a break, and then we'll come back and um, talk about what's next. Yeah. <laughs> maybe on the break. For the break. Okay, maybe, so maybe we are taking a break. break. We'll be right back. No, 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 no wait. Yep. Oh. <laughs> on the break. If you would like to know more about what's going on in this world, you could go to worldofchaldea.com and you could check out our Chaldeopedia so you can be up to date on what is happening here. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now you can go to break. Okay. <laughs> We're going to break now. <laughs> <laughs>
back. I told you we'd come back. Here we are. <laughs> I got to I got to jump on the chat a little bit and say hi. Uh, I want to call, call out thank you for Merck Worky and Paul and Steve and Armando and uh, if I scroll back further, oh, there's a oh, with it's you guys. Thank you. <laughs> it's we. Yes, thank you. Thank you for coming by and thank you for. Jumping into chat. Sorry, it's hard for me to chat on Twitch and DM at the same time, but thank you to my players who are uh, keeping up with it. Bless and, you. Uh, oh, bless you. Sorry. <laughs> to song to severely <laughs> <laughs> the amen. Okay. Oh, no, the priest thing took a little too far. Okay. <laughs> so, what, um, so the chaos unfolds. Um, you know, it's sort of like this um, uh, uh, if, as the, the roaring of the Drazzledar, the um, uh, eventually subsides a little bit after about an hour as the sun is coming up. This is getting close to dawn. The, uh, everybody goes on high alert and guards are like, you know, like, by within a couple hours, there is an entire legion of of um, uh, of the first legion deployed throughout the, the palace grounds everywhere. I mean, it's just like legionnaires everywhere. There's um, uh, everybody's awake. Rumors are going around. The rumor that is going around is that the Drazzledar have um, revolted, and there's some rumors that the Drazzledar have killed. The emperor. Um, and uh, you are very shortly after um, you, know, you, you say okay, and you go back into your apartment, go up to your thing. It's not long, like about within an hour, um, somebody comes and knocks at your door, mm -hmm. and it is a. Um, Tribunus of the legion. Okay. Okay. So that's a uh, that's a military off. There's a high-ranking officer. Uh, there are multiple tribunes in a legion, but not that many. Like maybe five to ten. Okay. They're all the people below the legatus are tribunes. So you know that's a uh, um um and let's. I'm making up an NPC uh, and I'm just going to randomly um, come up with it. Okay. It's a Phoenician. Kanahu male named Abdasir. Mm -hmm. Abdasir uh, says, um, and he's going to be very proper, like, you know, so whatever the right term is for you. Um, uh, Lord of Ages, Lady of, Lady of Ages. Yes, Lady of Ages. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Lady of Ages, Lenora. I am Abdasir, Tribunus of the First Legion. Thank you for retiring to your quarters. Um, we do not, there's clearly a situation here, and, um, I don't know what I, else I can do for you, but I want to offer, if you have any questions that I can't answer, I am here, I recognize and respect your rank. He, he, he would also refer to you as a senator. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are the Dresseldar actually revolting? They are, they were making a lot of noise. No one has gone in to check? They're not allowing anybody into the throne room. They're, def they are either, they've either revolted against the emperor or they are protecting the emperor from a perceived threat. We're not entirely sure. So. We're not allowed there either. But you are also his protection? Are you not I as the army? We are. <laughs> and you are, if there is indeed a threat happening in that throne room, no one is attempting to get inside. Oh, people have died trying to get inside. The Drazzledar. We are, yes, we are in service to the Emperor, but let us be honest, the Drazzledar, the backbone of the power of the Empire, mm -hmm. as Cordava's personal power, uh, is as well. And if Cordava is... He appears to be in... Um, he's not, he's not answering his cell phone. 
Yeah. <laughs> we keep calling. He's uh, going straight to voicemail. Uh, uh, he has not made a presence, and the Drazeldar have, are not allowing anybody into the throne room. We are unsure of the situation. The Drazeldar, um, nobody's getting hurt as long as nobody goes into the throne room. Does that make sense? Where is Ventus? Uh, Ventus. Uh, Ventus. Ventus. He, like, he's... The- uh, uh, the warden of the forested lands of the empire. Um, sorry, I don't know. Th- I well, don't know. I him. would like to speak with him. <laughs> okay, I will do what I can. Thank you. Okay. Very well. That's actually great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So what? Um, Eventually, um, I'm going to come back to you. I'm going gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna to plant something in and on you first of all. I like first plants. Of, yeah, I'm going to plant some plants. Plants. Yeah. Yeah. plants are so um, That was a nice song. <laughs> okay. Um, Law Froth appears to you in a dream. You're suddenly oh. in a dream. You're oh. dreaming, but you're awake, like a waking dream. Okay. And you're in his um, palace. And um, he... Uh, says you. Uh, I want you to go into the uh, go into the imperial palace and get as close to the um, council as possible. And you have uh, you can attend council in my stead. If there is a council meeting today, there's supposed to be one. And if you can't, then go to the hall. And what I'm interested in is anybody who might be trying to take advantage of the chaos of the current situation. And also, what is the current situation? Well, he's not going to admit to you if he doesn't know. He's not, no, no, no. He's not going to give any sign that, he, that there's any mystery to him no. about what's happened, what the drowsers are up to, and whether, what's happening with Gaddafi. He's not going to admit any of that. But he is going to ask you to keep your, say, look for any signs of anyone taking advantage of the situation for personal gain at the, at the cost of the empire. Your will be done. What, what, is, what is, would his title be like? I don't want to call him master. It seems weird. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, scaly one. Yeah. Oh, 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 great lizard. Oh, oh. I think Thunder master is dinosaur? master's fine. Or grand vizier. Grand vizier. Yeah, you will grand be done, vizier. grand vizier. Yeah, that's perfect. Jafar. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, take off to the palace. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so um, as you're going to the palace, I'm going to say for convenience I walk like sake this. that um, I if I'm. Steve's working on, by the way, a detailed map of the city. I can't wait to show you yes. guys. I'm excited. Um, yes. And I think in his faster, map. I think, yeah, yeah, why is it? Don't forget my house and workshop. <laughs> uh, yeah. My modest I estate. think that his house, his workshop, Steve, is at a, a place where uh, ideal location for seeing what I'm about to describe. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So Here it comes. on your way to the palace, there is um, uh, you hear an earthquake approaching you. Oh no. <laughs> There's a Drazzledar <gasps> running through the city oh. toward the palace. Basically oh. going down the same street you are. Uh, step to the dodge, side. Dodge, like, dodge. <laughs> always run to the side. Yeah, yeah, just like press up against the wall. And this Drazzledar is bellowing oh. and, um, and is heading to the palace and just like knocking shit over, like anything that's in his way. It's like when you move and like how you would run through the grass, mm-hmm. you're not bothering to notice which grass is sticking up, which grass isn't, which oh. grass is in your way, because it's just grass, mm-hmm. right? That, that's what the Drazzledar is doing. If there's a building that is in the way, he, the Drazzledar doesn't care because it's just grass, okay? and. And he goes running by, and you're, you're like, holy crap. You're looking at him go by. And then you realize there's a second one right behind him following. So two Drazzledar Super. run by you. Tight. Let's see. Two Drazzledar per tight, legion. Tight, 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 hmm. tight, tight. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Huh. yeah. Can, uh, I, can I ambulance, ambulance chase them? 
Yeah, you want to slip streaming? Is that what yeah, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your like, right, and then you're going to hopefully your... one Tokyo drifts into the palace <laughs> and you can just follow so Tokyo, guys. Tokyo drift is behind the drowsel. Yeah, uh, yeah, so they, they go up. When they get to the palace walls, they just jump over it. Okay. I go through the doors. Yeah, you're like going to a... use your... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like a schmuck. Yeah. 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 That, that's where uh, you're going to lose them for yeah. a while. Fair enough. Yeah. I'm okay with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so... Lexi, um, at some point, um, the praying stops eventually. Olson <laughs> uh, kind of wraps up this prayer as dawn breaks. Um, you, the priests of Set often um, they don't like dawn. There's something about dawn. I'm sure it has nothing to do with raw. No. Yeah. Um, no. I'm sure it has nothing to do with you know the sun. I mean, sun's just an anumia. What's probably anumia? Not, yeah, mean, probably nothing to do with that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so he wraps up his prayer right before dawn, right mm -hmm. before sun. There's this moment of twilight where moon is still in the sky as sun shows up, and the sun brightens. The other anumians flee from the brightness of sun, and but moon stays, and because sun and moon are lovers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't ever see them anyway but they're <laughs> they're romantically inclined they're 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 um uh, they're a couple mm -hmm. and moon always lingers a little bit in the morning while sun arrives anyway before that happens um Hosan <laughs> wraps up his prayer and um uh turns to you and we'll talk and says um, i fear Hard, horrible times are upon us. The God Emperor of Chaldea is dead. And I will require your company. And he starts to walk. She is just like on autopilot. Like she follows him like automatically. Like her body is like moving. And as they walk, she's going to lean in and just quiet. It's like, has, has Set sent you a a message, a vision, some kind of guidance? Doesn't answer. Well, she'll take her cue and just keep following in silence after yeah. that. So, um, <laughs> other, uh, other, uh, like the next layer down, which would be like bishops and stuff like that. Yeah. Except, I'm gonna, I, I don't mean to disrespect um, uh, Catholicism here, but the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the equivalent of the next rank down in the clergy. Mm -hmm. Are uh, falling in and bring lighting with incense, and um, there is a um, uh, it, it becomes a procession, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a sort of ongoing prayers, and uh, you and we'll talk, just follow Hosan and um, come and go go. Um, uh, and the light, the sun has come out. You come out of the palace, walk across the grounds. Everybody gets out of your way. There's no guards to try and stop you guys. Um, uh, and go up the steps of the, um, uh, the palace. Are the Drazzledar still yelling? Uh, no, they yeah. are. I mean, there's like a little rumbling, you know, like maybe one of them will whimper okay. now and then, you know, <laughs> just like a, a, they, they've come off the thing. You guys don't uh, go to the throne room. And you don't see the throne room. The passages to the throne room are guarded with, um, uh, and you see not only legionnaire commanders in there, you see a psionic syndicate, of what are called the Dilu uh, warriors, which are, um, yeah, they're freaks. They're all psionic, psionic freaks. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> those guys. No so judgment on our end. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, a woman, human woman, with black hair and um, fine features and pentavolo um, robe comes out and holds on to what is, you know, what has happened here. And she's, she looks like a person who never gets shaken, but she's clearly shaken, but trying, but she's obviously very powerful and holding it together best she can. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the emperor is impaled to the throne 
with the spear of your God. And then when she says that, she has a little bit more of a hint of accusational tone. <laughs> you just like <laughs> scoot away. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, uh, no. I think maybe you arrived about now. Oh, okay. that, that's good. She's just kind of overhearing <laughs> this little um, exchange. Just, just for a reference, so the set spear, has that like an item that has existed on the mortal plane or oh, is yeah. like, I've just seen this on statues and now it's here for real? Oh no, like... he carries this thing all the time. The emperor, oh, so it's yeah. his spear. Yeah, it's, it's um, it. uh, Kurdava, the emperor, wields an artifact of his god. It's called the Spear of Set. Oh, okay. So it's and not he's, like he's wielded it for a long time. In fact, he wielded it since when he was a mortal. He's had this thing forever, right? Okay. It's this big, big, black, powerful spirit, right? I mean, not powerful and, enough, um, apparently. And, uh, or um, just powerful enough. <laughs> Uh, it could kill a demigod, so. Yeah. Didn't protect him, though. Uh, well, it's his fault for losing it. Wow. 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 Yeah. Uh, Do you say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he should have held on to it tighter then, huh? Mm. No. Uh, so, you guys, you all, you two, Hassan, but the priest, and other people who are arriving happen to be really close by. Um, end up in the Grand Hall. It's not the throne room, but this Grand Hall that is just outside where the council meetings happen. And um, uh, you're starting to see other people that you know, um, whoever they might be, you know, um, people arriving, um, you know, just after, after dawn, whoever could, could hear about this quickly enough and be here within an hour. And there are, the city is waking up to this, to the rumors. Mm -hmm. I mean, these rumors are starting to fly through the city mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. people are like, you know, in, in various stages of disbelief and crisis setting in. The, um, Hosan peels off into a private meeting with, um, uh, Tiamir, who arrives shortly after that. Shortly after Holson does, after you and Holson does do, and so once he's kind of out of your presence, you have a little bit more like, oh, okay, I don't have to stand here like an attendant, you know, and mm -hmm. not you know with my thumb in my mouth, you know. I, yeah. Yeah. And so, what I kind of like to do here at this point, it's eight twenty, um, is um, I'd like to just kind of narrate a little bit of what happened. Like, so the council council meeting is canceled and rescheduled for two days from now. Um, it's a, ch you know, there's chaos. I mean, nobody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. You hear that the same story from different angles, that the throne room is um, uh, guarded off. Nobody can get in there. That there's people that have tried, have died, that there are dead bodies inside the throne room that can't be rescued. The emperor is in there. Um, Oh, and it gets a little crazy as these two Drazzledar oh, show crazy. up. Oh. The two Drazzledar that you followed, mm -hmm. you know, they don't go crashing through the wall. They do actually bother at the palace level to go around and find the, the, the path through the grass. <laughs> yeah. They've been asked to be nice about but it. These two Drazzledar show up and they, they go tear, everybody gets out of the way. They go tearing off to the throne room. The people that are guarding the entrance to the throne room <laughs> try to get out of the way and a couple of them get killed. Yeah. You know, oh. more casualties. Poor guys. Uh, the, and, but you can tell the Drowsadar aren't trying to kill them. They're just ants that are in the way that get mm -hmm. stepped on by the Drowsadar. And these Drowsadar go off into the throne room. And um, um, So now there's 22 Drowsadar in the throne room. Probably yeah. could take them at twenty, but twenty-two, that's too much. Yeah, many. now yeah. now it's yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's yeah. too much. Okay, so um the Yeah. So you have um so the so the word gets out to you and the two of you that um uh, that obviously would be an investigation. Palace goes into lockdown. Everybody's expected to, um, you know, go to your quarters. Um, go to, um, uh, in the case of like you, you can be in the grand hall, or you can go, or you can leave the palace grounds. You can't wander about aimlessly. Um, and the um, 
Timir consults with Bogoslav, and they, you know, disagree that, well, we need a couple of days to figure out what the hell's going on. So council member, council is rescheduled for two days from now. And then you get a formal follow-up the next day about, and that's when the agenda is announced, mm -hmm. that, yes, the, the emperor is dead, he's been killed. The, we're not sure if it was the Drazadar or something else. Mm -hmm. um, but there will be a briefing tomorrow, which would be day three, and um, council will be in session. And it has the agenda items we talked about before, which is that um, to investigate this, Amon, uh, Amandela needs to have authority to interrogate anybody who was on the grounds. Why'd you look at me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh -oh. that, felt, that felt so pointed. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, Tarsus is uh, declaring martial law, and Bogoslav is summoning the Senate. So those are the three topics. So cool. um, since you will be at the council rep, uh, uh, for Laufroth. Um, for Dragon Daddy? Dragon Daddy. <laughs> I actually wrote that on the thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, so what I'd like to do is to do our little uh, uh, confessional. It's not oh. a confessional. I call it a confessional. Because I go, <laughs> like, cause we're I go going through. in with a drink to the booth, and we're like, oh, my God. And then the, the emperor died. <laughs> can you even believe him? I'm a traumatized. <laughs> yeah. No, you can. Uh, um, and what I'd like to do is to free take turns to make, uh, you know, to say a paragraph or talk a little bit about one of those topics. And... Uh, and as you're doing it, you could talk like, I'll come sit in wherever okay. chair, uh, whoever comes up, I'll, we'll just trade chairs for a moment, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll um, uh, and you talk to us, not the camera, okay? Like you're talking to council members. Gotcha. And, okay. and say, so who feels ready to do that? Mm. Who wants I, to go first? I could jump in. You want to do that? Yeah. All right, go Lexi. Yeah. Go, yeah. go yeah. Lexi. All right, yeah. all right. All right, Lexi. I think Lexi. I have a bag of Cheetos hidden on my seat that I'll move for you. So <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Oops. Uh, ooh. Ooh. The chair of power is yours. I know. Ooh. Let's see here. Yeah, have a seat. Think about it. Then when you're ready, just take a beat and pretend you're in character talking to the, to the council, which is spread out to your left and right. Oh, boy. Um, so you said to just choose one of the three topics that you I think up, that's correct? Yeah. I think that's probably best. I can do that. Yeah, because that's going to be the one that lines most people. We never talked about beliefs tonight. Oh, well. It's okay. We'll come back to that. We'll talk about beliefs when we're done with all this. <laughs> but this might say something about your beliefs. <laughs> oh, it will. <laughs> <laughs> it will. <laughs> well, we have obviously found ourselves in un unprecedented times. Uh, we have an empire with no emperor. But I think that the first cause, the first thing that we have to do before we can bring order and peace back to our world, to our land, is to find out who did this. There will be no rest. There will only be suspicion and it will lead to violence in order to keep any semblance of authority, there has to be closure on this matter. So I give my support to Amandela to do what is necessary to try and find who did this. None of us are perfect. None of us here have a flawless past. However, I can say with confidence that you will not find anything in my mind that led to the death of my emperor. So I am willing to open to that and to confirm that by any means necessary. And I would hope that those closest to our emperor would be able to do the same thing without fear or shame. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in the council is sir, is sir, but we, as your <laughs> friends, are like, ooh, ooh nicely done. Like a really good time. Oh my God, good job. Nicely done. She said, bring on the torture, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to go second? 
I mean, you're not. Are you? I yeah. don't know that I'm. You no. go. You go. No, you're there. Yeah. So you. Okay. You go. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll yeah. take. I'll. I'll oh, wrap up. Die. I'll mop I up the whatever. Cheetos back in my lap yeah, after that. that. Oh, that's right. interesting. <laughs> 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 you put it. Put it back in. That's great. <laughs> I stand before you in Lolfroth's absence, and I speak on the matters in his stead. Tonight, our country has suffered a great blow. How it has been perpetrated is beyond me. But Lolfroth, as well as those who are in power must surely know. Amandela will seek those, out, those people out. She will uncover the secrets that have been hiding and festering in too many dark places. With all of our support and all of our aid, we will uncover how this happened. Who would have hated him that much to hurt him in his own seat of power? Make no mistake, this was not just the removal of our emperor. This was an act of war. This will have consequences, and we will root out this cause. Amandela has my, as well as all Froth's, full support in this. And anything I can do, I will aid her. I just stare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're sort of staring. I just stare people down. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Team nice. Torture the Council. <laughs> torture the Council. Gosh. Use right. aura reading. Yeah. <laughs> now for a different perspective, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> now for something completely different. Um, not Team Torture the Council. I, I mean, Torture the Council, whatever, I'm not there. Um, <laughs> Who was? You could wave it, by the way. You who could. was the one that um, wanted to summon the emergency Don't session of the Senate? That. Uh, Bogoslav Tumir. Yeah, Tumir. Uh, no, it was Bogoslav. <laughs> Bogoslav moves. Tumir is his last name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did not write that on my notes. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Tumir. Tumir is uh, the uh, Senate chair and the council chair. He Swap. runs the council in the Emperor's Swap. absence. Mm -hmm. Which is like, um, does that mean he's in charge of the Empire now? I would like to thank you all for taking a moment to hear from an outside voice in this time. I would like to urge Tiamir, along with his summoning of the emergency session of the Senate, to bring more elven voices onto both the Senate and the Council. Now is not the time to shut out who could be your allies. I think that's it. I think that's all she does. <laughs> She's like, Perfect. you should not ignore us. <laughs> Look what happened when you did. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I think that's it. We will stick our cannibal spiders on you. I mean, I, hey, my neighbors are cannibal spiders. <laughs> they does that eat mean people. Spiders? No, you said cannibal. That means they eat other spiders, right? Yeah, but like also they eat other things. <laughs> like people. <laughs> Not elves, though, so oh, we're yeah, good. That's true. Okay, it is 8.33, and I want to wrap up uh, almost like, I mean, you know, very, very soon. But I just want to talk briefly about beliefs. Um, so we didn't talk, it's, it, it's interesting that here we are at the end of our second session in a way, first session, but uh, plus the, um, uh, the session zero event that we had two weeks ago, and we haven't talked about beliefs, when beliefs are actually the most important. 
Arctic of burning wheel. Mm -hmm. But we really couldn't talk about them until now because we had to get to know who these characters were and are, right? It is the last, if you look at the character burner and character generation system, it's the last thing, or may, maybe the name comes last, I don't know. But anyway, it is towards the end of the process. So uh, you have at least three beliefs. If you wanted four, given your position, uh, I mean, some characters get it automatically, I don't remember who, but um, uh, if, if you don't already have something that would give you a fourth belief, if you want one, given how powerful and multifaceted these characters are by now, you could just say, I want a fourth one, that's fine. Um, the tricky part about beliefs is that beliefs have to be actionable. And in some, I, there are debates about what a belief is actually really the best word for. It's almost like a goal, but it's mm. tying together a belief that you have but what are you gonna do about it, gotcha. right? And so, like, you could say, uh, and I, and there's some, I probably won't get this right. If there's anybody from Burning Wheel headquarters watching me, <laughs> they're sitting there with notes and sharpened pencils I'm and being we'll ready to, to, to after yeah, yeah, yeah. Luke is gonna be emailing me afterwards. No, I think I got, um, I think I know what works uh, pretty well. Um, one technique, and it's not the only technique, one technique is you can kind of combine a long-term belief slash goal, but have a, uh, a near-term objective of like, what are you gonna do about it now? And so like, you could think of somebody who says like, you know, my goal is to be king of the land, you know, let's say king of England or whatever, let's put it in the real world. But to be king of the empire, but first thing I need to do is get friends in high places. Mm. So um, I think, uh, you know, I think, um, Lord uh, Mithras uh, would be a great ally. And so I am going to go and so I'm going to win the, um, uh, the trust of, King, of, of Lord Mithras. And so that's kind of like, you know, because I want to be king someday, I'm going to go do this near term thing. Burning Wheel, one of the things that's great about Burning Wheel is that you can create NPCs on the fly with the circles mechanic and you can create campaign world information with the wisest mechanic. Um, you can buy things that you need to buy. You can say, hey, you can be proactive about taking steps to get your character towards the goals and your beliefs. So you don't have to do this right this second. I'm just doing this little speech to put you like in the mindset of like, what are your beliefs? But how, make them actionable. What, what could you do if I didn't prompt? If I ignored your beliefs, what could you do to force it? <laughs> what's what's um, uh, yeah? Okay, I think I'm at the phase of starting to repeat myself. So <laughs> I'm going to quit talking about that. So I encourage you between now and ideally before the next session, so that I have a chance to learn your beliefs uh, before the next time you, you come back. Um, what, what your beliefs are and what you're going to do about it, given that you, you know the situation. Instincts are also interesting, but they're, um, you know, think they're not as important as beliefs. Uh, you can kind of, if you want to limit how much you try and tackle at once, you can wait on instincts. But you think of instincts as very tactical and very like a reflex action you do of a, like an if, this, if then statement. If this happens, I do this. Like something that you do so fast without thinking about it. It's kind of like a reaction in Dungeons and Dragons in hmm. 3E and later, uh, where if this trigger happens, I do this. It should be something that can happen like this. It should be, the trigger needs to be unambiguous. Like we all know that trigger happened. There's also sort of like um, the, I always do this. Mm -hmm. I always draw a map. That would be a good one for Megan. I always draw a map. Yeah, I always draw a map. <laughs> yeah. Or you can also That's do an I never tonight. statement. Gotcha. I never raise my voice or, or whatever. There's great examples on the internet if you search around for uh, instincts, stuff like that. And instincts, like character traits, if you um, use them to get yourself in trouble, like create obstacles for yourself or send a plot in a new direction, you get rewarded for that. Um, very last thing that we need to do, we didn't, since we haven't put beliefs in place, um, normally what we do at the end of a session is have an evaluation of like, did you uh, contribute to your beliefs or something? I mean, do, do kind of a simple 
simplified version of what we normally do in the session right now, and it's going to be closer to your moments of gratitude that you do. Okay. Okay. So each of you can um, uh, give a uh, an appreciation moment of to another player. Like, say, I appreciate you for this. How would you word it? Let's, you, yeah, I am. Gr I'm grateful for this thing that you have done. Yeah. In thing. I, yeah. I'm going to start because I know yep. one already. Yep. Um, I'm, I think uh, Lexi killed it at the end there in her, <laughs> in her like, way to go first and show us how it's done. That was great. I, I like, you leaned so hard into let's just, like, torture everybody maybe to death. And I was, <laughs> like, <laughs> hokey dokey. <laughs> we're really, we're really going. Excited. I feel like y'all have never seen me play a darker character before, which I actually have done for fun, like, off streams. So I'm excited to do it with you guys. Get in there. Right. Yeah. Right. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want to say thanks to Bryce, because there was one specific moment in your ending speech where it was a bold choice where you said um, like none of us like including La Ferran, like don't know what happened like blah 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 you which Whoa. to specifically name him as doesn't know what happened doesn't know what to do like yeah. he might slap he, you someone's later. gonna tell him you said that well I'm you sure know. he knows I'm sure he knows, knows. knows <laughs> immediately and the fact that but you have said your character is trying to like get that spot and you can't be scared of the dragon forever if you yep. want to do that. So I, kudos for that, that boldness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love what you did. <laughs> He's going to say that, but sorry, we said, so I love you, Sarah, sticking to just like, you know what? Doesn't need, to, you guys are doing some heavy stuff. Anyway. Yeah, you got some this stuff is, happening. This is what's going on with me. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. Nothing Sweet. else. Yeah. This is what's important to me. Yeah, you humans are short-sighted. <laughs> so I'm just trying to remind everyone of the larger picture. That's why we wear glasses. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. 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 yeah, Excellent, excellent. Can, can I also? I'm yeah. grateful for you, Peter, for yeah. DMing the session. Like, thank you. Get, getting in there and giving us so much fun lore dump and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you are each going to give you. You're each going to gain one persona. Yeah. Uh, and um, for, uh, I know, we're going a little off of uh, strict canon here, but you're just going to put one persona and one fate. And it's Ooh. for if we were in full mode of what all the different um, Arda awards are, that's close enough to how it would have worked out anyway. So cool. I'm uh, comfortable with that. So you each have now, now you each have three, three uh, fate and two persona and no deeds. Deeds come from like six, ten adventures in doing oh, okay. some really big super... Heroic thing, or like killing the emperor. Thing. Can yeah. I take a deed for having killed somebody the got a deed? Right. Somebody <laughs> definitely. A song, somebody so. earned a deed. <laughs> yeah. uh, and by the way, Who the song it? will not come up. In the, I mean, okay. I would warn you if it was, but okay. it's it's not going to come up in the in this council meeting. Great. Uh, <laughs> I can I uh, I would love to. Perhaps Steve can send me <laughs> what the song was so that I know what it was. Or future reference. It doesn't have a name. It's well, uh, the Elven like Coral. Was in, oh. we, we call it the Elven Coral. No, but I mean, like, what Embers. was in it, like, so that what I know. Doing? Yeah, Steve, I want you to write down all the words. Get on it, Steve. <gasps> yeah, write down the whole Steve. song. It's about an hour long. Yeah. Listen, yeah, yeah. I know how much you love work. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> write me an Elven song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't. We have more important things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, if you can't tell, I had a great time. <laughs> I love this. So I much mean, fun. I've been so excited for the last few weeks since I came up with the idea of wanting to do this. And um, thank you all for helping me fulfill this. <laughs> so much fun. This. And I don't even, I hope people like it, but at one level, <laughs> I'm doing it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that I, I, yeah, I hope it's good for Gen Con TV uh, because I love Gen Con, I love Gen Con TV. I also love Chaldea. I love all the people that I work and play with. I'm just full of love. And, so much love. <laughs> but when I'm DMing, I'm going to be a bastard. I will warn you. Um, so I will be back in two weeks. We are Mike Boozer and I are alternating weeks for DMing uh, in Chaldea. Uh, so next week you come back, Mike will be running a game uh, back in Graver's Dig. 
Uh, very uh, mm. playing Dungeons and Dragons, mm. going out, killing monsters, collecting the treasure, going up levels. <laughs> and uh, two weeks from tonight, I will be back here uh, with three different players and um, uh -oh. finding out what where they were the night that dun, the dun, Emperor dun. died. The and, music died. Um, maybe mm -mm. yeah, yeah. The music died. <laughs> yeah. Bye <laughs> bye, American Pie. See you on the Twitch channel. Musical episode. <laughs> Musical episode. Musical episode. Make it happen. Jazz hands. Peter can DM the musical episode. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs>